Hello friends. This is Fanfic Adventure. How are you all? So in this video, we will see, what if Naruto was become the king of king. Here is a short summary. He was abandoned by his own family in favor of his siblings whom are Jinchurikis and children of the prophecy. He grows from being forgotten to a legend, without the love or warmth, and facing countless of hardships. With only his strong-willed, noble heart and courage, he grows into someone with the power that far beyond powerful than Rakuto Senen but will he save or destroy. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. The night of October 10th will be forever remembered as the greatest tragedy by the villagers of Konoha. Unaware and unprepared for such event, the great nine-tailed fox suddenly appeared in the middle of the village and attacked everyone and everything in its path, causing not only Konoha nearly destroyed but also suffered massive casualties. Many shinobis and kunoichis sacrificed their lives to defeat the rampaging creature but to no avail. Even the third Hokage too unable to defeat the tailed beast. Huff, huff, damn it, where's Minato? Quote, as Hiruzen was busy with his thoughts of Minato, he kept striking the Kyubi with his staff as the Jonans attacking the beast from every direction with Kaden, Endon and Doden, Doryuden, however, the Kyubi replied by launching a powerful shockwave that thrown everyone even the Sandam himself. Then, the Kyubi saw an injured Jonan who's laying on the ground and attempted to kill the shinobi by crushing him with its paw butt. Sweden. Swiryuden no Jutsu. Kyubi was pushed back by the Nidem Hokage's Jutsu making it extremely anger and roared loudly at the unfazed Senju Tobarama. Sensei. Like Hiruzen, everyone were happy and grateful for the sudden arrival of Nidem who gazed at the angry beast with stoic face. He then released a sigh and looked at Sandame with a serious face that made the retired cage to shiver in his fear. Saru why the hell is Kayubi here and where's Minato? Tobarama's question was finally answered when Gamabunta appeared from sky and landed on Kayubi's head, pinning the beast to the ground with Minato on top of Gamabunta's head. At the same time, Kayubi was preparing its bijudama which Minato and the Kayubi disappeared in a burst of smoke. There. Tobarama looked at the direction that Hiruzen pointing and witnessed a huge explosion which caused him and his student to shunshin to Minato's location. When they arrived they saw a barrier surrounding Minato with his four children, Naruto, Menma, Mito and Natsumi, with Kashina binding Kayubi with her Kongo Fusa. Minato kun. Please, let me die with the Kayubi, said Kashina to Minato, who's performing the hand seals of Shiki Fujin, much to Kashina, Tobarama, and Hiruzen's horror. Minato kun. Stop. Please stop. You're going to die if you use that jutsu. I'm sorry, Kushi chan, but this is the only way. I'm afraid the masked woman will come back and take Kayubi just like she predicted, said Minato as he finished the hand seals and stared at Tobarama and Hiruzen with a sad smile. Tobarama sama, Hiruzen sama, please take care of my family. A soul for a task. State your wish, mortal, said Shinigami as he focused his attention at the sleeping Naruto. Sensei, what should we do? asked the third Hokage to Tobarama who's staring at the Shinigami. We can't do anything but to watch Minato's final moment, said Tobarama with a somber tone as he stared at the man that he respected who's going to sacrifice himself. Shinigami sama. I beg you please seal the Kayubi into three of my four children. The soul for Menma, Yang Chakra for Mito and Ying Chakra for Natsumi. The Shinigami only silent as he removed his knife and sealed the Kayubi's soul, Yang and Ying Chakra into Menma, Mito and Natsumi respectively. Use the remaining of your time to do whatever you want mortal. Minato nodded his head as the three ninjas went to the soon-to-be-dead Minato who's playing with his children. Minato. Please don't worry about me Sandame Sama. I'll be fine. Minato grinned at Hiruzen who shedded a single tear and watched Kashina hugging the yellow flash while crying. After all, my children will be safe especially with both of you. Why you only sealed Kayubi into three of your children? Said Tobarama to Minato who's handing over the sleeping Naruto to the retired cage. I want one of my children to free from the shinobi life. I want Naruto to have the life that everyone doesn't have. Freedom and peace. Besides, the masked woman that attacked me earlier told me that one day Kayubi and Naruto will belong to her. Both retired cage stunned what they heard and stared at each other. 
Hiruzen then gave the crying Mito to Kashina who hugged the baby and ate her forehead while Minato is playing with Menma and Natsumi. As for Shinigami who witnessed the scene, he was about to take Minato's soul when a disembodied male voice spoke to him. Shinigami, can you hear me? Yorichi-sama, what can I do for you? I need you to spare Namikaze Minato's life. He will be needed when the two children fighting against each other for the sake of tomorrow. Shinigami nodded his head but confused why the voice wants him to spare Minato's life. That child that was held by that Senju is one of the children. And as a replacement for sparring Namikaze's life, the child's life will be altered. Altered into. He will face countless of hardships and through those hardships, the gods and royal kings will know whether he is the savior or the destroyer. As you wish Yorichi-sama. The voice thanked Shinigami as he placed his knife into his mouth back and gazed at Minato. Your lucky mortal. Contacting me to perform a task will require your soul but I spare your life to let you live happily with your family, however, I will take something from you that is precious to your family. Farewell mortal. The confused Minato was about to ask the Shinigami but he immediately passed out and fell to the ground just as a squad of Anbu with the legendary Sanin arrived to the scene. The god of death then gazed at the awakened Naruto and smiled for the first time when the baby smiles at the deity. Farewell chosen child. Time skip. Two hours later. Location. Living room. Namikaze Uzumaki estate, Minato. Are you sure you're okay? You don't feel anything wrong with you? Say something please. You have been silent for two hours. Please say something. I promise you I will give you a free ICHA oof. Both Tsunade and Kashina elbowed and jabbed Jiraiya's chest and abdomen respectively. Luckily their attack was not serious if not Jiraiya will suffer multiple broken ribs and ruptured internal organs. Minato-kun? Are you okay? Please say something. Kashina stared at Minato's cerulean eyes as she grabbed his hand gently but firmly. Minato-kun? I'm fine. Thank you for worrying me but I can't stop thinking what Shinigami-sama said earlier. Minato released a heavy sigh and stared at the sleeping peacefully Naruto. And whatever he meant by taking something precious to our family. I can't deny that it is connected to Naruto somehow. Maybe you just overthinking and Esides you're still tired from the ceiling. Why don't you rest first? Minato nodded his head at Tsunade and smiled at Kashina. To think you survived using that Kinjutsu. What an amazing man you are Minato said Orochimaru to Minato as he staring at the sleeping Natsumi with a smile. So Minato, what are you going to do with Menma, Mito and Natsumi? Minato looked at Jiraiya and said, Kashina and I will train the three of them when they are five. For Naruto however I want him to have a peaceful life and doesn't involve with any shinobi affairs. That's a good idea. Majority of us wish we live that peaceful life but we never get the chance, said Orochimaru in somber tone as everyone agreed. I will like to make Natsumi as my apprentice one day. I want to pass all my teachings to Menma. Don't worry. What I meant is the shinobi knowledge and those stuff. You better make it sure Jiraiya or I personally cut you into pieces, said Kashina as she producing a menacing aura that made Jiraiya shivered in fear in his behind Orochimaru. Well looks like Mito will be the next slug Sanin Ha. Tsunade grinned madly in Ed Mito's cheek, much to the baby's happiness who's giggling. As they talking about Menma, Mito and Natsumi's future, the sleeping Naruto suddenly opened his sapphirine eyes and stared at the ceiling with a curious face where it looks like he's staring at someone. Child, can you hear and see me? I am the one who spared your father's life in exchange of altering your life where you will face countless of hardships. Only through these hardships we will find out whether you're the destroyer or savior, said the disembodied voice that spoke to Shinigami earlier to Naruto, causing the young baby to smile. You will forge a new path and a new world for everyone and you will grow into a warrior with the power to save or destroy. My child, beware of the seduction of the calamity. I will always pray for you. I wish you luck and take care Naruto. We will meet one day. Seven years later. In the training ground of Namikaze Uzumaki estate, five individuals could be seen playing with each other happily. The first individual is no other than Namikaze Minato who's chasing the second individual. A seven years old boy with spiky red hair and violet eyes, Namikaze Uzumaki Menma, the second children of both Yellow Flash and Red Hot Blooded Habanero. When Minato caught his second son, both Menma and Minato laughed loudly. The third individual is Namikaze Uzumaki Kashina with two individuals playing her long soft red hair, much to her happiness. 
The remaining two individuals are Namikaze Uzumaki Mito, a replicate of Kashina but with cerulean eyes, and Namikaze Uzumaki Natsumi, a girl with long yellow hair with two pigtails and violet eyes. It looks like they are a perfect family which will be true if not for a pair of sapphirine eyes gazing at them with sadness. The short spiky yellow-haired child who's watching them from his room at second floor of the Hokage's house is no other than Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto, the eldest children of Minato and Kashina. He looks an exactly replica of Minato if not for the hairstyle and whiskers on his cheek. Now, why will Naruto staying at his room and didn't join his family? Well the answer was easy. They forget him or to be precede, they neglecting him. It's been two years since they neglecting Naruto due to the prophecy by his godparents on their birthday. Thanks to the ancient prophecy, there's a rift between Naruto and his family. Surely either Minato or Kashina can send a clone to Naruto teach him the basic but every time he asks, they will tell Naruto that he will learn in the academy. Yeah right. He will learn in the academy. Naruto shook his negative thoughts about his family and decided to go to the nearby park to clear his mind. Location. Konoha's park Senju Tobarama is having a good day as he enjoying the calm and peaceful moment at the Konoha's park. He watched several clansmen smiling at him and even several kids bowing before him and wished him happiness. The retired cage smiled as he remembered about his late elder brother. This is what the village that Hashirama built for the future generations. If not because of him, the world still plunge into chaos and many innocent children died in vain, fighting for the survival of the next day. He remembered about the death of Hashirama which saddened him greatly as the first Hokage unable to enjoy the peaceful moment beside him. Tobarama then suddenly saw a child leaning against the tree and facing the lake. Curiously, the cage went to the child and immediately realized it is the eldest child of the fourth Hokage. The child quickly turned around and stared at Tobarama with curious face. How can I help you sir? Asked Naruto politely as he gave some space to let Tobarama sit beside him, earning a mentally praise from the second Hokage as he sat beside him. Child. Why are you sitting here alone? Oh. It is because I want to clear my mind and this place makes me feel peaceful and happy for some unknown reason. Somehow this tree is the reason why I feel peaceful, happy and relax and it's like this tree is living. Said Naruto with a smile as he enjoyed staring at the sky that made him amazed. Such an amazing kid to mask his emotion perfectly. Thought Tobarama before he stared at the tree that he's leaning against. He smiled as he remembered this is tree that Hashirama created via Mokaton and he will always visit this tree and lean against it staring at the sky or the lake to clear his mind. Then, Tobarama just noticed something. You could sense me? Um yeah when you're coming at me, I can feel your chakra but if I concentrate more, not only I can feel your chakra but also sense your emotions and listen to your footsteps. Quote. Tobarama was completed stunned and amazed at Naruto. He then wondered why he didn't spend time with his family like other children. Naruto. Why you didn't spend time with your family? Surely your family can help you especially your father. Naruto only looked Tobarama with a curious face and said, I don't want to be rude sir but how do you know my name? Tobarama chuckled at Naruto's reaction and replied, Your father is my successor and one of your godparents is my grandniece. Wait. Your second Hokage. Ah. Forgive me for my rudeness. Instead of glare or harsh scold from Tobarama, Naruto received a soft chuckle and a smile from the brother of God of Shinobi. He was confused at why Tobarama laughing and tilted his head. It's okay Naruto but I want to know why you didn't clear your mind with your parents. Bonding with them is the most best way to clear your mind but instead you choose to sit here. Well, my parents busy training my siblings because they are Jinchurikis and they need to control the Kyubi if not one of them might lose control and attack me. So I don't want to interrupt their bonding session although it's kinda hurt my feelings because they seems to forget about my existence. Some more. I overhead that my father and my mother wish me not to be a shinobi which angers me because I want to be a shinobi to protect the village like the Hokage before. Tobarama only stared at Naruto with a stoic face but inside he's so angry and can't believe that Minato and Kashina can't even spare time with the poor child. But he calmed himself down and smiled when Naruto desired to be a shinobi to protect the village like his late elder brother, him and his student. But it's fine. I am strong and I don't mind if they spend most of their time with my siblings. After all, I'm the eldest and I can take care of myself. Say Naruto what if I train you? So that you won't fall behind. After all, you're the eldest and need to take care of your family. Besides, I won't take no as your answer. 
Naruto stared at Tobarama with teary eyes and furiously nodded his head, much to Tobarama's amusement as he ruffled his blonde hair. Ever since their first meet at the Konoha's park, Naruto always went to Tobarama's house to train in the art of shinobi. The first day of his training was funny where Naruto woke up at 6 a.m. and waited Tobarama at the Konoha's park for an hour which made the retired cage impressed with his dedication. Tobarama will train him about the leaf balance exercise, tree walking and even the water walking which Naruto mastered all of it less than a month, making Tobarama shocked and amazed. It didn't take too long for Tobarama to realize that Naruto is a prodigy. Not only that but he possesses unique eyes that capable of predicting enemy's movement as well as allowing him to see the muscles, blood flow, and joint movement of his opponents which Tobarama dubbed as see-through world. Then, Tobarama will teach him about Shurikenjutsu which one of Naruto's favorite subject. With his guide, Naruto even create a new jutsu, Kanai Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Shadow Clone Kanai Jutsu. After that the second Hokage will teach him Senju Fist's Keita. A year later, after mastering the Shurikenjutsu and the Senju Fist's Keita, Naruto tested his affinity and found out his possesses all affinities and what's make more awesome is that they are unique which Tobarama admitted that he never seen someone with strong affinity for a long time. The chakra paper split into five pieces. The first piece is the fire affinity. Instead of ignite and turn into ashes, Naruto's fire affinity caused the paper to become a flaming ball that exploded and released a rain of hornet-like fireballs. The second piece is the lightning affinity. Instead of the paper piece wrinkle, it caused the paper to release a burst of orange lightning. The third piece is the water affinity. The paper immediately soaked but not only that, several dried leaves on the ground floated itself and soaked too. The fourth piece is the wind affinity. The wind itself violently cut the piece until there's no more a single tiny piece of that paper. The last piece is the earth affinity. The piece of paper immediately became brown and dropped to the ground but most shockingly is that the impact of the tiny paper caused the ground to crack slightly. When Tobarama saw what happened before him, he immediately remembered about the ancient prophecy that his parents told him and his siblings before. Even Saru's personal monkey said the same thing. Born from the pure king and corrupted queen, two children will fight each other for the sake of tomorrow. One with the power to save while another one with the power to destroy. They will face countless of hardships that will decide their future as the savior or the destroyer. That's what Tobarama's parents always told him. The Naidem immediately knew that Naruto is one of the children but which will be. Is he the savior or the destroyer? From that day onward, Tobarama trained Naruto in his water and lightning affinity while fire affinity will be teached by Uchiha Shisui. For wind and earth, Naruto will study himself at the library or Hiruzen guided him. He also taught Naruto the Kenjutsu which Naruto loves it and mastered everything Tobarama taught. Perhaps, Naruto can wield the rage and no Ken if he desire but the cage will see about that. As for relationship, Naruto's relationship with his parents getting worsened to the point he usually eat dinner at Tobarama's house or Makoto's house. The latter he met after Shisui introduced him to Itachi and Makoto. Like Tobarama, both Itachi and Makoto angry for what Minato and Kashina did to him. Even at the academy, no one speaks to him or befriend with him with the exception of Narashikamaru, Akamichi Choji and Aburame Shino. Even his siblings mocked him and told him how special they are. At the age of nine, things get worse. One night, Naruto was on his way to his home but a drunk Chunin suddenly attacked him by destroying his right eye with a kanai. Luckily Tobarama was secretly following Naruto and he quickly act by knocking out the Chunin before things can get worse. Then the cage sent him to Anko and Ibiki via cage Bunshin while Tobarama immediately brought Naruto to the hospital. Tobarama wanted to tell everything to Kashina and Minato but Naruto begged him not to do it as it will cause more trouble. The Senju then reluctantly agreed with what Naruto said. The next year became worst at the academy as more people start bullying him especially Uchiha Sasuke. On top of that, he need to cast a genjutsu on his lost right eye so that no one will ask about it. Then, on that faithful night, the night of his 10th birthday where he celebrates his birthday with only Tobarama and Makoto, something terribly happened. Itachi and Shisui were not at there due to some urgent business which Naruto understood but he can't shake the feeling of something's bad going to happen tonight. He ignored his thoughts and focused on his birthday. Tobarama presented him a katana with crimson handle that have black thin line design, with black hexagonal design and dark blade. A black mie with red outline ornament attached to the hilt. 
He also presented a tanto with black handle and golden blade that have black outline. Naruto, this is used to be my late brother's sword, Hakai. With this very own blade, he claimed Uchiha Madara's life, said Tobarama to Naruto which amazed him completely while Makoto was stunned to see one of the legendary swords before her. The blade itself was special. Try channel your chakra into it. Naruto channeled his chakra into the sword and immediately the blade covered by flame. Not only that but Naruto somehow felt more powerful and peaceful. He swore that he heard someone whispered to him earlier but he ignored it and received the tanto. This tanto is known as Arashi no Tsurugi, Sword of Storm, and it can enhance your lightning affinity three times more powerful. It's far more powerful than Reijin no Ken, Blade of Thunder God, which I plan to give it to you but I decided Arashi no Tsurugi is more better. No one knows about this because I rarely use it. Naruto placed the weapons on the table and immediately hugged Tobarama tightly, earning a chuckle from the retired cage while Makoto watched him with a smile. What makes Tobarama more happy is that. Thanks grandpa. For these gifts, I will cherish it forever. Naruto broke the hug and received a rare smile from the serious cage, making him grinning madly. He then gazed at Makoto who's smiling at handing him a wooden box. When he opened it, he saw three black scrolls. It is the list of a rank above Uchiha personal Kaiden Jutsu that only certain Uchiha knows. It is a gift from both me and Fugaku kun. He even wished you happy birthday. Said Makoto happily before received a hug from Naruto and giggled at his foxy grin. This is from Itachi, a scroll containing all his genjutsu. Holy crap. From Itachi Sensei. That's seriously cool. He has tons of amazing genjutsu. Naruto then took the red scroll from Itachi and arched his eyebrow when Makoto handing him another red scroll but this time with a crow symbol. What's this? From Shisui, all his personal jutsus. Naruto gasped and immediately took it as he tried to unseal the scroll but strangely nothing happened while Tobarama narrowed his eyes for a moment. The apprentice of Naidem then looked at Makoto with a curious face. Shisui said you will able to unlock it under several circumstances although he didn't explain why. That's enough. Let's go eat. Around two hours later, Tobarama could be seen placing a sleeping peacefully Naruto on his bed. He smiled at his apprentice and was about to exit the room through the window the same window that he had used to enter Naruto's room but he stopped his intention as he overheard Minato, Kashina, Tsunade, Jiraiya and Orochimaru discussing about the children. It appears that the kids are excited to join the academy tomorrow. Tobarama instantly knew the voice belongs to Orochimaru, one of his students' student. Yep. And I'll be there for their first day of academy. I can't wait to see how Mito experience her first day of academy. This time it is the voice that belongs to Tsunade, her grandniece. On top of that, I am 100% sure that they are the rookies of year. Besides, they will be trained by the legendary Sanin in the future right? Tobarama recognized this voice as it belongs to Jiraiya which he greatly disliked due to his pervert attitude. What about Naruto? asked Kashina that caused everyone to silent. When I think back, it's better for Naruto to join the academy and let him decide what he want to be in the future. After all, we've been ignoring him totally. Said Minato which everyone agreed before Minato immediately snapped. Today is his birthday too and we forgot about it. Tobarama only released a sigh and closed the window before Shunshin to his house just in time as Minato and Kashina immediately entered the room only to find their eldest is sleeping peacefully. Few hours later, Naruto woke up from his deep and peaceful slumber after hearing something or someone tapping his window many times. Lazily, he opened the window and found out it's Shisui's crow. He noticed that there's a small note tied onto its leg and read it. Naruto, meet me at the cliff that we always spend time together after training. Make sure no one follows you. Hurry! Naruto shook his uneasy feeling and quickly went to the cliff that Shisui asked for. When he arrived at there, he saw Shisui standing on the cliff that overlooking the huge rainfall. Shisui, what's so rus? When Shisui turned around, Naruto was horrified at the condition of his surrogate elder brother. His face was covered with numerous bruises and cuts with blood covering the left side of his face while his left eye closed. Few holes could be seen on his chest with several kanais and shurikens embedded to his body. Naruto quickly snapped and grabbed Shisui before he could fall and tried to heal him but Shisui stopped him and stared at Naruto with a sad face. Who did this to you? We need to go to hospital now. It is useless. Arg. Please Naruto. Please. Listen to what I'm going to say. 
Naruto only silent and stared at Shisui with a teary eye as the dying Jonin took a deep breath and said, There was a rumor about Uchiha clan planning a coup d'etat so Fugaku-sama, Itachi and I investigated. We found out that it was false rumor but something was not right so we tried to search the source of the rumor and we found out it was from several clansmen who wished to overthrow Fugaku-sama and Minato-sama. And then not only that but, quote, but what Shisui? Shisui gritted his teeth and coughed up an enormous amount of blood as he felt his lungs filling up by his blood. Uchiha Izumi, the descendant of Uchiha Madara, who mysteriously disappeared 15 years ago reappeared and slaughtered majority of Uchiha clansmen with the help of Danzo and Root Anbu. Itachi, Fugaku-sama, Makoto-sama, Satsuki and Sasuke survived although majority of them unlucky, said Shisui before he gasped for his breath. Izumi and Danzo chased after me to get my Sharingans so I fought them while Fugaku-sama and Minato-sama with several Anbu dealing against the massive root members and several Uchihas that planning the coup d'etat. At first I gained the upper hand but then Izumi revealed her Mangyeko Sharingan, she then tricked me to avoid her attack which Danzo quickly ripped my left Sharingan and tried to steal another. But I quickly killed him with my Suzano. As for Izumi she quickly disappeared but before telling me that Konoha will burn to ashes. Against Naruto's wish, Shisui stood up slowly with his legs shaking as he coughed up blood. Leaning against the nearest tree, Shisui stared at Naruto with a smile. So Naruto. Please accept my final gift, said Shisui as he performed a cage bunshin that took his remaining Sharingan from its socket and placed inside Naruto's lost right eye and healed it with a limited knowledge of medical jutsu. Naruto. The reason why they want my eyes because my eyes capable launching a powerful genjutsu that far more powerful than Itachi's Tsukuyomi. If it falls to wrong hand, the whole world will thrown into chaos. So please Naruto, accept that gift, accept my Sharingan and use it to protect Konoha. Shisui smiled at the teary Naruto and hugged him before lost the strength to stand up, as fast as Hiraishin, Naruto laid Shisui to his laps and cried seeing one of his family dying before him. Don't cry. Nah. Ruto. Death is a natural part of life. Remember Naruto. I am. Always. Proud of. You. With that Uchiha Shisui died peacefully with a smile on his face, if he's still alive by now, he will see both of Naruto's eyes became Sharingan that fully matured and spinning furiously before transformed into Mangyeko Sharingan. Then. S-H-I-S-U-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-
To be honest I don't even know what should I write or how should I write. I'm seriously at writing a letter. Anyway, if you read this it means I have died peacefully after entrusting you with my final task, protect Konoha. And also, if you read this, I estimated that you read this letter one or two years after my death. I'm so sorry for everything, for not being there, for not congratulating your graduation, for not being there to comfort you on your first kill, for not embarrassing you in front of your girlfriend and future wife and for not there to witness you saving Konoha. Naruto, I have a lot of things to tell you. I begin with my eye. As you know, my eye is the most greatest Sharingan that ever existed due to the ultimate Genjutsu, Koto Amatsukami, and if it falls to other hand, it will cause the world in chaos. But what you do not know is that it also allows you to see visions of future. Yes Naruto, I know it sounds stupid but I'm not lying. I foresaw you facing Izumi with 20 crystalline weapons circling you and 20 ghostly presents stood behind you. With my eye, not only you have Koto Amatsukami but also divination an ability to see the future but unpredictable. Next thing I want to tell you is that why your right eye seems to be sapphirine instead of Sharingan or dark right. It is because I found out that Uchiha clan and Namikaze clan is a cousin which means you can awaken the Sharingan. Not many people know this so please keep it secret until you deem fit to reveal it. I found it out when I was traveling to ancient temples of Uchiha that still exist across the world. Reason why it is sapphirine is still unknown as I have no much time to discover it. The next thing I want to tell you is that please open up to anyone who wish to reconcile with you but it is your choice. As for your family, forgive them for what they did but never forget what they did to you. It is your decision whether you want to hate them, ignore them or leave them and build a new happy life. Naruto, you are a strong person. Someone with strong will that's stronger than the steel and noble heart that outshine hundreds of gold. Naruto, I am so sorry for leaving you at a very young age. I truly wish I was there for you but fate has decided that I have to depart early. Remember Naruto, death is a natural part of life. I'll be always watching you from the heaven. Take care and good luck Naruto for the hardships that you will face in the future. P.S. I'm sorry for the writing style. It s but hey, my genjutsu is ten times more better than you. Naruto cried after finished reading the letter and hugged it tightly. He read the last part with a smile and wiped away the tears before went to his home. After that, those who greet him, Naruto will greet back, those who smiles at him, Naruto nods his head. He stopped calling his parents mom or dad or whatever, he referred to them as Minato-sama or Hokage-sama and Kashina-sama, much to their sadness. Right now, Naruto is standing before Aruka, preparing to graduate from the academy. Alright Naruto, show me Henge, Bunshin and Kawarimi said Aruka happily to the blank expression Naruto who nodded his head and transformed into a perfect replica of Tobarama, making Aruka shocked and proud. Good. A perfect henge, now Bunshin. Naruto performed a Bunshin and dispelled it immediately before Kawarimi with the nearby chair. Aruka happily told him he passed and gave the headband which Naruto took it and bowed before Aruka as he thanked the Chunin instructor for his teaching, much to Aruka's embarrassment. As Naruto leaving the class, Aruka called out for his name. Naruto, I'm sorry for not being there whenever you need someone. Although our relationship is not good, I do pray for you and proud to tell you that you will be one of the most powerful shinobi ever existed. And Naruto, thank you for saving my life yesterday. If not because of you, Mizuki already kill me and run away with the forbidden scroll. Quote. Naruto turned around and gave Aruka an extremely rare smile before leave the class. On his way to the outside of academy. He saw Mito walking to Aruka's location. Naruto ignored her sad gaze and exited the academy. He looked at the sky and went to Tobarama's house but was stopped when his parents stood before him. Congratulations Naruto. Aren't you going to wait for your siblings? Asked Minato who hopes that at least his eldest son will wait for them. No, said Naruto as he prepared to walk away but Kashina stopped him. Naru-chan, please let us fix our relationship with you. I know we both are a terrible parents to you but please give us a chance to fix everything. Said Kashina as she placed her hands on his shoulder which is a big mistake. Immediately, Naruto slapped away her hands and glared at her hardly. And Naru chan I hate physical contact, Kashina-sama and on top of that, have you ever wait for me? A teary Kashina couldn't find the answer while Minato looked at the ground with a shameful face. Seeing the two of them extremely sad, Naruto only walked away from them heading towards the retired cage's house. 
When Naruto entered the house, he nearly jumped when Tobarama, Hiruzen, Konohamaru, Makoto, Itachi and Fugaku shouted congratulation Naruto. Thanks. Said Naruto with a small smile and started to have dinner with his family. Yes, his true family. It will be more happier if Shisui was there. Time skip. The next day location, class, Konoha's academy. All right everyone, attention please. Aruka stared at the students who are noisy except for Naruto. He took a deep breath and shouted, All right brats, sit down so I can tell you which is your team mates and sensei. Everyone sit down and stared at Aruka who shook his head and began to announce the members of team 1 to 6 which is bored to Naruto until. Team 7 will be Namikaze Uzumaki Menma, Namikaze Uzumaki Mito and Namikaze Uzumaki Natsumi, your sensei will be Uzumaki Kashina and Hitaki Kakashi. Everyone heard them complained about how strong the team with two senseis while Naruto wondered why there's two senseis, he just ignored it and listened to, to team 8. Team 8 will be Inazuka Kiba, Abarame Shino and Hayuga Hanada, your sensei will be Yuhi Kuranai. Shino immediately frustrated by showed it by making his bugs buzzing noisily which Naruto only chuckled. Relax Shino, your sensei is a good sensei, it's not about sensei Naruto, it's about Kiba and Hanada. Ah Kiba the annoying Inazuka who kept looking down at him and Hanada who is a creepy stalker and always claimed the Hayuga is the most powerful clan. Team 9 will be same as last year. Team 10 will be Yamanaka Ino, Abarame Choji and Nara Shikamaru. Your sensei will be Serutobi Asuma. What? Sensei? I don't want with these two lazy bums. Can I change with someone sensei? Screamed in loudly like a banshee making Naruto, Shino. Choji and Shikamaru's ear nearly exploded. Ask Hokage sama. Was all Aruka said to Ino who released a sigh and sat down while glaring at Sakura who's smiling at her mischievously. Team 11 will be Sai, Haruno Sakura and Uchiha Sasuke, your sensei will be Gekko Hayate. Cha. Ino pig. I have Sasuke Kun in my team. Woohoo. Another scream that caused Naruto to release a sigh and gazed at Aruka who disappointed with her attitude. Team 12 will be Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto, Uchiha Satsuki and Karama Yukumo. Your sensei will be Uchiha Obito. Everyone in the classroom went into silent as they glanced at the dead last of Academy. Aruka glanced at Naruto who stared at the outside of the window and said. Everyone, I want to tell all of you that I'm extremely proud to teach you and I can't wait to see all of you become the greatest shinobi that protect Konoha with the will of fire. Perhaps, one of you inside this classroom will be the future Hokage. I hope all of you will work together to protect Konoha just like the previous shinobi who sacrificed their lives for the sake of the next generation. Everyone immediately cheered when they heard Aruka told them while Naruto only smiled at Aruka who smiled at him back. The Chunin instructor then informed that their senseis will pick them up within 10 minutes. 30 minutes later, most of the teams had picked up by their senseis except for Team 7 and Team 12. Their prayers were answered when an angry Kashina pulling Kakashi and Obito by their ears. I've been searching both of you for 30 minutes and I found both of you giggling watching that cheap porn books. Ah Kashina sama. I'm so sorry. Please let me go. Kakashi's right. Please forgive us. Kashina let them go and ordered Team 7 to follow Kakashi and her to the training ground 7. Before she disappeared via Shunshin, she glanced at Naruto who stared at outside. Team 12. Follow me to the rooftop. Quote, Both Satsuki and Yukumo rose up and quickly went to the rooftop but they realized they left their final member of Team 12. When they turned around, they saw him already disappeared. Staring at each other, both Satsuki and Yukumo went to the rooftop quickly and gawked at Naruto who's standing beside a grinning Obito. Alright everyone. Let's start with the introduction. Um sensei, can you start first? Said Yukumo to Obito who only chuckled. Yeah, shouldn't sensei start first? Satsuki glanced at Obito and received a nod from him. My name is Uchiha Obito. I like to read Jiraiya-sama's greatest book. I dislikes those who abandon comrades, rapists, people who look down at us and people who love to compare. My hobby is training with Kakashi and Gai and spending time at Konoha's graveyard. My dream is to be the greatest Hokage that ever existed, said Obito proudly which made Yukumo and Satsuki amazed at him while Naruto just silent. You're next. My name is Karama Yukumo. I like to read books and help my mom cook delicious food. 
I dislike rapists, traitors and perverts. My hobby is to train my genjutsu and water the plants. My dream is to be the genjutsu mistress and make Kuranai sensei proud of me. Yakumo finished her words with a bright smile and gave a peace symbol. Ah I see. That's a great dream Yakumo and I can't wait to see that. Your next emo girl. HNN. My name is Uchiha Satsuki. I like to eat candies and my mom's food. I dislike rapists, traitors, perverts, weak people and Naruto. My hobby is to train. My dream is to awaken my Sharingan and kill that woman who killed my clan. Obito and Yakumo only silent at what they heard from the silent Uchiha who glanced at Naruto before Obito cleared his throat and stared at Naruto with a smile. Alright, your next blondie. Nice to meet all of you. My name is Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto. I like to play Shogi with Tobarama Sensei and Shikamaru, eat chips with Choji and watch Shino playing and explaining his bugs. I dislike people who abandon their family and comrades, traitor, pervert, rapist, people who compares me with someone and people who look down at me. My hobby is training with Lee and Neji, spending time at graveyard and sparring with Tobarama Sensei or Hirazan Gigi. My dream is. Everyone stared at Naruto who curious about his dream. To make everyone happy and smile forever. They gawked and widened their eyes especially Obito who never ever heard someone dream about that. He snapped back to his reality and said, Well that's an interesting and a good dream Naruto. Anyway, the three of you haven't become a genin yet. In order for you to become genin, you all need to pass one last test tomorrow. I need to warn you that the chance for you to fail that test is 66%. So I really hope that the three of you pass. Well then meet me at training ground 12 tomorrow at 8am and please do not eat or else you will vomit while having the test. Goodbye. Obito disappeared via his Kamui after waving at his students. The three graduated academy students looked at each other and went to their separate direction until. Satsuki. Naruto. Why don't we go to the nearby restaurant to discuss about tomorrow? Satsuki looked at Yakumo and released a sigh as she wanted to go home and training but when she think back, it's a good opportunity to know each other. You're right. Hey dead last. What about you? You're right. We can know each other's strength and weaknesses as well as discussing about potential event tomorrow. The three of them then went to the most famous restaurant in Konoha that known as Yakiniku Q. They then discussed about their strengths, weaknesses and potential event. Suddenly, both Yukumo and Satsuki discussed about their embarrassing moments. When they asked Naruto. I think the most embarrassing moment for me is. Tobarama sensei used the forbidden jutsu at me. What's the name? I can't remember but it's embarrassing to men. In instant, both Yakumo and Satsuki bursted into laughter that made Naruto crack a small smile as he enjoyed their drinks. Few hours later, they returned to their home with a good mood especially Satsuki which made Fugaku and Itachi prayed to the god that something bad never happened to them tonight. When Naruto returned to Minato's house, he saw his family waiting for him to join them dinner. Naru ni. Let's join the dinner, said a happy Natsumi to Naruto while Kashina, Minato and surprisingly Mito stared at him with eyes filled with hope. The eldest child of Hokage was about to turn down the offer but then remembered Shisui's letter. Okay. His family except for Menma all happy when Naruto agreed to join them. Naruto then took the seat beside Natsumi who's smiling at him, facing a happy Kashina, a grinning Minato and a scowl Menma. They soon ate their food and started conversation that made all of them laugh while Naruto only frowned as he eating his food. Naru chan. Why you didn't say something? said Kashina as she offered him a piece of grilled beef which he politely rejected. It's rude to speak while eating. Everyone instantly went into silent while Minato stared at his son proudly. Kashina glanced at Minato and smiled at the eldest who finished eating his food and went to wash his dish while Mito and Natsumi watched his brother in awe. As for Menma, he did nothing but continue eating his food. They returned to reality when Naruto bowed before them and wished them good night. Both Satsuki and Yakumo arrived at the training ground just in time as Obito appeared not too far from them with his space-time ninjutsu. Wow. You both managed to arrive eh? Now where's Naruto, if he late I have no choice but to fail all of you. I'm here. I've been here since 6am. They turned around and stunned to see Naruto who's sitting on one of a branch tree while reading a scroll. He sealed his scroll and put inside his pouch before jumped to the ground and glance at the grinning Obito. Naruto wears a sleeveless black turtle shirt with matching anbu pants and a pair of sandals. 
his entire arms were covered by bandages with a blue armband that has Senju clan's crest. A pouch attached to his right hip with storage on his left thigh. Unlike the three members of Team 12, Naruto wears his forehead protector around his right bicep. Satsuki wears a black short-sleeved shirt with high collar, matching shorts with a pair of dark blue shinobi sandals. She also wears white warmers patterned with black butterfly and white leg warmers. Two pouches attached to her hips with a tanto on her back. Yukumo wears a pink kimono held closed by a pink sash with two pockets on the front with matching violet baggy pants patterned with red rose and red mesh armor underneath of her kimono and legs along with dark sandals. Like both Naruto and Satsuki, she has a pouch attached to her hip. Obito wears a flak jacket over a long sleeve shirt that he rolled up to his elbows with dark blue pants and a pair of shinobi sandals. Dark silver arm guards with black outline. Black bandages wrapping his calves and a red armband with Uchiha clan's crest on his right bicep. He wears his forehead protector like Kakashi, closing his left eye. Amazing Naruto, you've shown us one of leader's material. I'm lazy to be a leader. Said Naruto casually to Obito who sweat drop upon hearing that and remembered a certain lazy and relaxed Jonin who reading Icha Icha right now. Can we start the test? Obito jumped away from his students and revealed to them two bells that he wore as a bracelet. The students who saw the belts immediately titled their head in confusion which earned a soft laugh from Obito. The test is easy, just take these bells from me but why too? Simple, one of you will return back to academy. Well then, let's begin. The three soon-to-be Obito students quickly disappeared into the forest behind them and started to think the strategy. Both Satsuki and Yukumo are having difficulty to think a best strategy to take the bell while Naruto released a sigh after he knew something. It's about teamwork because there's no way a genin could beat Jonin. Ah whatever, I better watch Satsuki-san and Yukumo-san attack Obito-sensei first. Seconds later, Satsuki quickly charged at Obito and threw several shurikens at him which the Jonin easily deflected with a kanai. The man with heavily scarred right face watched Satsuki performing hand seals that made him grin. Kaden. Gokaku no Jutsu. Satsuki expelled a large blazing orb at Obito who quickly performed hand seals that made Naruto instantly knew what technique he going to use. Sweden. Sujihenki. Naruto and Yakumo watched Obito spat a stream of water from his mouth at the ground, which circled around him and rose upward as a wall that protected him from the blazing orb. Satsuki-chan. I'm truly impressed with your jutsu. It's three times more powerful than a normal Uchiha and twice more better than mine when I was genin. Congratulation. Satsuki blushed when she heard that and immediately regained her composure after the steam that caused by her jutsu colliding Obito's jutsu disappeared. She then took the fighting stance of Uchiha Interceptor Fist and engaged the elder Uchiha in combat. Satsuki delivered a roundhouse kick at Obito who grabbed her ankle and threw her away before noticed that Yukumo charging at him. Sweden. Tepodama. Kaden. Karyu Enden. Satsuki quickly recovered and threw another barrage of shurikens at Obito who deflected all of it and jumped away when Yukumo tried to take his bells. Satsuki. I know that we're not really in a good terms but let's work together to take the bells. What about the dead last? Asked Satsuki which only made Yukumo frown. Let's just leave the dead last. Who needs him anyway? Satsuki smirked and together with Yukumo rushed towards Obito who's looking for Naruto. He only released a sigh and deflected another barrage of shurikens before forced to dodge a water shuriken technique that caused by Yukumo. Satsuki then tried to attack Obito with a fast jab but Obito grabbed her wrist tightly and threw her away before kicked away Yukumo. Before two of them could fall to the ground or recover, Naruto quickly saved them and brow them to the nearby tree. What the hell are you doing dead last? Can't you see that we're the one who gonna pass this test? Screamed Satsuki in frustration to Naruto who only silent as he stared at Obito. Yeah. Dead last like you should just stay away from this test. Yukumo glared hardly at Naruto who took out a kanai from his pouch and said. You both are the dead last. I'm surprised that both of you didn't figure out the true meaning of the test. Both Yukumo and Satsuki looked at each other with a confused face and stared back at Naruto. The true meaning of this test is teamwork. The bell test is just a ruse to test whether we can work as team or not. Tell me, have you ever seen a team that consisted of one Jonin and two Genin? Naruto received no reply from the two Kunoichis that looked down in shame. He then continued, I will distract Obito-sensei, 
both you grab the bells when get the chance. Naruto charged towards Obito with pure speed that made the everyone especially the elder Uchiha to gawk. Obito calmed himself down and watched Naruto through the kanai. Cage Bunshin Kanai no Jutsu. A single kanai became hundreds of kanais that made Obito widened his eyes and responded by channeling his chakra to his feet and jumped to avoid the projectiles. He then landed on the ground and avoided Naruto's punches and kicks with ease. That's a new jutsu. I've never seen that jutsu before. Yeah because I created it. Said Naruto to Obito who smirked and avoided a spinning kick from the Namikaze. Naruto then covered his entire arm with Raiden and delivered a fast jab at Obito's face only for his attack phased through the elder Uchiha's face. What the? Obito delivered a punch to Naruto's face but Naruto burst into lightning, stunning Obito temporarily. Satsuki then saw this as a distraction, performed another Kaden. Gokaku no Jutsu where Obito forced his still not recovery body to avoid it. Yukumo then quickly trapped Obito by binding him in Genjutsu realm with Genjutsu Shibari. Amazing teamwork but I want to figure out more Naruto's abilities. Thought Obito before his right eye became Sharingan, breaking the Genjutsu Shibari and grabbed both Satsuki's wrist and threw her away before made Yukumo dodged a kanai that he thrown. Now where's Naruto? Naruto bursted out from the ground and delivered an uppercut that made Obito flew to the air. The elder Uchiha quickly recovered and engaged Naruto in Taijutsu match. That's hurt. Seriously hurt. I know. Naruto blocked Obito's punches and ducked to avoid his spinning kick, he then performed a tiger hand seal as his four fingers surrounded by his chakra. Obito who right now standing before the crouching Naruto widened his eyes and desperately tried to jump away from him but it's already too late for him. Konohagakir Haiden Taijutsu Ogi, Senen Garashi. Obito stared at the blushing madly Satsuki and Yakumo before comically leapt into air. When he landed on the ground, smoke could be seen coming out from his anus. Sensei, are you okay? Asked a heavily worry Naruto to Obito who only replied by crying at him. Here take my hand. Obito grabbed Naruto's hand and slowly rose up before noticed that he has a mischievous grins. Oh shit. Naruto bursted into electric, shocking Obito once again and forced him to his knees. The real Naruto then bursted out from the ground and performed full Nelson. The elder Uchiha tried to break free but Naruto wrapped his legs around Obito's waist as Yakumo trapped Obito via Genjutsu Shibari. Satsuki. Quickly grabbed the bells. Satsuki grabbed the bells just in time as Obito freed himself from Naruto and Yakumo's Genjutsu. He then released a sigh and smiled at the three of them. Good job Satsuki-chan but who should take another belt? Sensei. We already knew true purpose of this test which is teamwork said Yukumo as she grinned at Obito who clapped his hands. That's right. Team 12 officially passed the test. Congratulations all of you but I want to know how the three of you knew the true purpose of this test. Obito get on his feet and glanced at his three students. To be honest sensei, Naruto found out it first. That's why he didn't attack you like Yukumo and I because he want to analyze us. It's embarrassing to admit that a dead last like him could figure out easily said Satsuki to Obito as she looked down. Upon hearing that, Yakumo too looked down in shame. Whatever. Said Naruto with a blank expression, resulting both Satsuki and Yakumo to look at him with a sad face. Alright team. We meet here tomorrow at 8am for our first mission okay? I'll see you tomorrow and Naruto. Can we meet for a while? Obito watched Satsuki and Yakumo left them before stared at Naruto. He then gestured Naruto to follow him to Konoha graveyard and stopped before Shisui's grave. Naruto, Shisui told me everything about you. A week before his death, he sent me a letter. He told me everything about you including your Sharingan. Naruto only silent at what Obito told him. He just stared at the tombstone with a sad face. Naruto, I'm truly sorry for not being there to save my own best friend. It's alright sensei. I'm pretty sure that he also don't want to see you in a bad shape. The past is past. Just let it be, the more you think about it, the more you get hurt. Said Naruto as he paid respect to Shisui which Obito did too. What else did he told you? Your powers and abilities, your Sharingan, the people in Konoha treats you, your true friends and family and your true dream. Naruto. Will you truly kill everyone in Konoha especially your family? Naruto stared at Obito and only shrugged his shoulder before walked away, leaving an extremely weary Obito. He then released a sigh and shunshin to Hokage's office. 
Few weeks later, congratulation team 12. You all have complete another D rank mission. Said a happy Obito to his three cute lovely genin and watched Naruto return Tora to their client. Here's your cat ma'am but please try not to squeeze Tora. If not Tora will try to run away again next time. Said Naruto to the female client which is the wife of Fire Daimyo. He then rubbed the cat's belly and said, we'll meet again next time okay Tora? An angry Satsuki and a scowling Yukumo shocked at the interaction between Naruto and Tora the devil cat. They bowed before their client and gazed at Minato who also stunned to see the way his son interacts the cat. Alright team 12. I have another mission for you which is. Hokage Sama. I believe our team is ready for C rank mission. Said Naruto to Minato who only silent and glanced at Obito. I believe what Naruto said is correct Minato sensei. My super duper awesome team is ready for their first C rank mission. Said Obito to Minato as he placed his arm at Naruto's shoulder. All right then Obito. If you have faith in your team, so do I, said Minato with a smile while Satsuki and Yukumo couldn't hide their happiness after hearing what the cage said. Your first C rank mission is simple. Escort Fujikazi Yukie and her crew to the land of snow. As soon as Minato finished his words, a woman with long black hair and bangs that swept on each side of her face and violet blue eyes entered the room with Aruka. She wears a green blouse over a pink jacket with brown gloves. Ah Fujikazi-san, here's the team that will escort you to the land of snow. Minato smiled at Fujikazi who glanced at each members of team 12 with a stoic face. Thank you Hokage-sama. May I know when can we depart? This time Obito replied Yukie's question. In 10 minutes we will depart. My cute little genins, to play safe please pack enough supply for at least a month okay. Meet us at Konoha Gate. Fujikazi-san, allow me to accompany you to the Konoha Gate. Thank you for your kindness. Naruto, can you please wait for a while? Naruto nodded his head and watched everyone disappeared from his sight, leaving only the father and the son. The Hokage rose up from his seat and walked towards his son. Naruto, please be careful okay? I will. Minato was about to ruffle Naruto's hair like a father will do to his son but the eldest child of Hokage quickly slapped away his hand. As I told you and your wife before, I hate physical contact, said Naruto coldly before left his heartbroken father. Naruto. Why you refuse to give us a second chance? Time skip. An hour later location. Filming scene, land of snow. And cut. Everyone, it's time to break. An old man with glasses announced to the crew before went to Fujikazi who stared at the snowy mountain with a worry face. Sandayu, can we finish our filming at here as soon as possible? Fujikazi stared at the old man that identified as Sandayu who is her personal assistant. The movie director wants everyone to spend some time at here for a while. I've been persuading him that you want to go home quickly. Well maybe you didn't pursue him enough. Ah, uh, useless old man said Fujikazi to Sandayu who only looked down and walked away. Obito who saw what happened then went to Sandayu to comfort the old man. Thank you Obito-san but I used to Fujikazi-sama's verbal abuse. To be honest, can you tell me what really happened to Fujikazi-san? I sensed that there's something wrong about her. And so Sandayu informed the true identity of Fujikazi Yukie to Obito who was shocked to hear that his team not only escorting an actress but also the princess of Land of Snow with her true name as Kazahana Koyuki. He then explained that Koyuki's father was murdered by his own brother and they barely escaped from the Land of Snow. He also explained that he wanted to avenge the death of Koyuki's father by killing his brother who has taken over the land. I see but what you asked me is a very difficult thing that I could help. This C rank mission automatically turn A rank if we want to help you avenge Koyuki Sama's father and I need to inform to my Hokage. Quote. Before Sandayu could reply, a train arrived at the filming set which made everyone to confuse especially Sandayu. Then, a tall and bulky long-haired man came out from the train and sneered at Sandayu who widened his eyes. Sandayu. You old fool. You think you can stop me from taking what belongs to me. I will never give you what you want Dodo said Sandayu to Doto as dozens of ninjas with three people wearing a black armor came out from the train. Obito quickly protected Sandayu while Naruto guarding a terrifying Fujikazi with Satsuki and Yukumo protecting the crew of the film. If you refuse to give to me then I will personally take from her. Launch the kanai. A subordinate of Doto launched a kanai mechanism, 
releasing a wave of kanais that made everyone terrified while Obito stunned as he knew that he couldn't save everyone even if his team helps him. But the kanais never hit a single of them as Naruto quickly protected everyone with Sweden. Sujihanki. I'm sorry but if you want her, you have to get through me first. Satsuki and Yakumo you bring everyone to safety while Obito sensei and I will deal with them. Satsuki and Yakumo nodded their head before ordered everyone to follow them to safety, causing Dodo to grit his teeth and ordered his subordinates to chase after them. As fast as lightning, Naruto and Obito charged towards them and beat all of them with taijutsu, however, one of the people that wears the armor managed to sneak through Naruto and Obito and chased after Koyuki. Shit. Naruto was about to help but a female with armor attacked him by delivering a kick that he blocked just in time and jumped away to create a distance. You're quite strong blondie. Why don't you join us so that we can rule this land? Not only that but I also will give you countless of lovely night. Said the pink haired woman to Naruto who only scoffed at her and took his fighting stance. Looks like I will kill someone who is handsome as you but before I kill you, I will give you something you're going to enjoy. My name is Kakuyoku Fubuki. Tell the god of death that I send my regard to him. You will tell that by yourself. Naruto charged at Fubuki and delivered a chakra enhanced kick to her waist but the moment his toes touched the armor, his chakra was absorbed by the armor. Tisk, tisk, taijutsu is useless against me because of my armor. Not only that but it also absorbed the chakra, meaning, ninjutsu and genjutsu were also useless against me. Said Fubuki with a smirk to Naruto as she charged at him. Hayaten. Sabama Fubuki. Naruto quickly avoided the ice needles in the shape of miniature swallows out of pre existing ice, but the needles changed the direction and chased Naruto, who kept avoiding it, earning a mad laughter from Fubuki. Ha 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 ha. These needles won't stop until that maim you with sharp wings. Thanks for telling me, you annoying ugly bitch. Naruto extended his right hand with his left hand grabbing his wrist and shouted, Raiden, Sabaki, lightning style, judgment. Naruto released a burst of dark blue electric that destroyed the needles before charged at Fubuki and delivered a jumping kick to her head, connecting his foot to her skull, killing her immediately which made Doto and the tall man that fighting Obito to shock at his ability. Naruto watched Fubuki's lifeless body fell to the ground before heard a loud snap sound from Obito. Turns out Obito killed his opponent by snapping his. Looks like you're going to fail Doto, said Obito with his Sharingan glaring at the smirking mad uncle of Koyuki. You're not going to get what you want because we're going to stop you. Oh, I don't think so. Hayaten, Kokuryu Bofusetsu. Doto thrusted his arm to send out a black ether like dragon to strike both Naruto and Obito. Katen. Goka Mekyaku, Katen, Bakufu Ranbu. The combination of a sea of flame and a spiral blazing stream caused the dragon to melt immediately with the landscape devastated by both jutsu, making Naruto to frown while Obito rubbed the back of his head sheepishly. When the fire went down, Doto is disappeared. I don't think he die. Let's regroup with Satsuki and Yukumo, said Obito to Naruto before noticed that his student frowned at the devastated landscape. You all right, Naruto? I felt bad for melting and destroying this area. Whatever, let's regroup before things can get worse. Obito nodded his head and together with Naruto rushed towards Satsuki's and Yukumo's location. When they arrived at the area, they saw several crew members were injured with Yukumo healing Satsuki's injuries via a limited medical jutsu and Koyuki seems to be missing. Where's the princess? Naruto knelt down beside Satsuki and helped Yukumo heal the Uchiha's wounds with Irio Ninjutsu. Naruto, you know Irio Ninjutsu? Asked a shocked Yukumo to Naruto as he finished healing Satsuki's injuries. Yeah but compare to Tsunade-sama's Irio Ninjutsu, it's like you comparing earth and heaven. Naruto get on his feet and stared at Yukumo. Where's the princess? The guy with long hair managed to capture her and fly to that fortress. Said Satsuki to Naruto. Damn that stupid bulky ugly man, took us long time to kick his ass. How did both of you defeated him? Asked a curious Obito as he noticed that there's no sign of the bulky man wearing chakra armor's corpse around the location. Oh well, we damaged his chakra armor with my Gokaku no Jutsu and Yukumo's Tepodama. Satsuki said with a smirk and high five a happy Yukumo. And then he tried to run away by flying to the fortress but the damaged chakra armor exploded and he was killed. Sensei. Obito raised his hand, Satsuki chan, Yukumo chan, I'm proud of both of you. But remember, we as a shinobi will need to kill someone to protect innocent people, 
our friends and family, home and even yourself. Don't feel bad for killing an evil scum bastard like that guy. Obito-san, you need to help me please, you need to save Koyuki-sama, said a crying Sandayu as he fell to his knees which Obito quickly help him get on his feet, please. Before Obito could say something, dozens of Yukigakure shinobi appeared and surrounded them from every direction, making the crew members of the film too afraid. Sensei, I'll go save Koyuki-sama. All right but be careful Naruto. Naruto nodded his head and performed five clones. He then turned to the direction of the fortress as his eyes filled with yellow electricity. Senko Moto, Naruto then disappeared in yellow flash, making Obito to smirk as he remembered Minato while Satsuki and Yukumo to watch in awe. All right, where are we just now? Ah yes. Obito revealed his Sharingan to the Yukigakure Shinobi and performed Katen, Bakufu Ranbu. So are you a simple cage bunshin or Raiden bunshin? One of the clones snickered at Obito and said, Sensei, we are bunshin Daibakuha. Satsuki and Yakumo swore that they could see a black silhouette that took the form of Obito with a devilish grin. I have a great idea. Naruto's looked at Obito and grinned madly like a madman before stared at the Yukigakure shinobis. As for Naruto, he's running on the railway that connected from the place where he fought Fubuki to the fortress. He arrived at the fortress and kicked the door with his enhanced chakra kick, he then heard Koyuki's scream and was about to flash towards the location but suffered a massive headache that made him fell to his knee. He foresaw himself standing among countless of corpses with one-eyed beasts that have ten tails behind him and a white-haired woman with Rinne Sharingan on left eye standing beside him. I'm proud of you. Naruto-kun. Naruto snapped back to the reality and slowly calming himself down. He wondered what's the meaning of that dream and who's the woman that's standing beside him. Before he could continue asking himself, he heard Doto screamed in frustration. What? The treasure that your father kept for so many years is nothing but a heat generator. I'm going to kill you. Help. Immediately Naruto flashed towards Koyuki's location and punched Doto in his face just in time before he could kill Koyuki with a kanai. Are you alright Koyuki Haim? And Naruto, please save me from him. Alright, stay behind me ordered Naruto to Koyuki who nodded her head and do what he said. The young boy with three whiskers mark on each cheek gazed at the angry Dodo and quickly carried Koyuki via bridal style before jumped away and ran to the exit. Don't you dare running away. Koyuki Haim, I'm sorry but I need to deal with that annoying guy first. So you have to wait it here, said Naruto as he spat out a needle that made from water at Dodo's armor and watched it absorb the attack. Ha 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 ha. You fool. You have a death wish isn't it? Do you really want to die quickly? Asked Dodo to Naruto who only silent and stopped running as the rest of team 12 arrived at the scene. Look around you. I can eliminate you all right here and right now if I wish so. Giving Koyuki to Obito, Naruto gazed at Dodo with a blank expression and released a sigh when he saw the man that stood before him gave a sinister smirk that the apprentice of Nidam found it as ugly. You know I expected that my first C rank mission will be harder than I expected like fighting a guy with a large sword or save villagers from corrupted ugly fat short guy with army of stupid buffoons but turns out I need to face a stupid mad man who expected the treasure that he's been waiting for so long as just a heat generator. Said Naruto in an annoyed tone to Dodo who's eye twitching with a tick mark on his forehead. Shut up. Hayaten. Kokuryu Bofusetsu. Sweden. Sujihanki. Thanks to Naruto's water wall. Everyone was saved from the dragon. As soon as the water wall went down, Naruto charged towards Doto and engaged in taijutsu. He delivered a punch to Doto, but the latter easily avoided it and punched the former to the ground. Before Naruto could recover from the attack, Doto grabbed him by his and slammed him to the ground. The madman then laughed maniacally and delivered a punch to Naruto's face but received a headbutt to his face. Shit. That seriously hurt. Damn you little brat. Dodo ran towards Naruto and delivered a punch that aimed his stomach but missed when the genin sidestepped and received a powerful punch to the armor that cracked the armor. Looks like your armor is not really good enough. Naruto rushed towards Dodo and struck his face with his knee, stunning him temporarily as well as breaking his nose. Then, he delivered a powerful roundhouse kick to Dodo's arm, earning a loud, snap, sound and punched him away. Obito was amazed to see the strength that Naruto revealed to him. He mentally thanked the deity for making him as Naruto's sensei. Satsuki was completely shocked to see how powerful the dead last. 
she couldn't believe that the dead last of the academy capable of breaking a guy like Doto's arms. She clenched her fist tightly and glared at Naruto. Yukumo gawked when Naruto broke Doto's arm with a kick. Like Satsuki, she couldn't believe the dead last broke someone's arm with a kick. The heiress to the Kurama clan looked at Naruto with a sad face and promised that she will be as strong as Naruto and fix their relationship. Koyuki only stared at Naruto with drools and imagined something about the genin that resulted her to blush madly. She shook her negative thoughts about Naruto and screamed when Dodo punched Naruto in his face. Why you ing brat? You ing broke my arm, screamed Dodo in anger to Naruto. And you punch me, said Naruto in frustration as he rubbed his cheek. Yeah so what? You broke my arm, you punch my handsome face. Koyuki and the rest of Team 12 sweat drop at the bickering of Naruto and Dodo. Their stupid argument continued for five minutes until an angry Satsuki screamed at them. Hey both of you continue the fight. Stop fighting like a married couple and fight like a man. Calm down Satsuki. Let them argued over a useless and silly things because they are useless anyway. Yukumo said with a smile at Satsuki, earning a smirk from the Uchiha while their sensei only shook his head in disappointment. I already broke your arm and damaged your chakra armor. It's better if you surrender if you wish to live a bit longer," said Naruto to the angry Dodo who only silent. He released a sigh and walked towards Dodo but the broken arm man jumped away and chuckled evilly as he thrusted his hand. I'm going to end all of your life here. There's no attack that can defeat my final and most powerful technique. Channeling all chakra that his armor had been absorbed for many years into his hand, Dodo launched another ether-like dragon that is more bigger than the previous one and more powerful, causing Naruto quickly performed hand seals. Kaden. Goka Mekyaku. 10. Naruto exhaled a large amount of flames at the dragon but shockingly it didn't melt, causing Obito who put down Koyuki gently to quickly act and perform. Kaden. Goka Meshitsu. Despite receiving help from Obito by expelling a massive stream of intense flame, the ice dragon still charging at its target. Satsuki quickly rushed at her sensei side and launched the Uchiha Kamen Jutsu. Kaden. Gokakyu no Jutsu, not only that but Yukumo also helped the three of them. Kaden. Enden. With the combination of Team 12 Kaden Jutsu, the Ice Dragon was finally destroyed by the flame that it couldn't resist any longer. Naruto who wished that the entire area will not be devastated like the previous one, quickly extinguished the flame via a powerful Sweden. Swiryuden no Jutsu resulting Dodo to safe from the Great Sea of Flame. TCH, what are you doing? We can already kill Dodo just now. I swear to God that you're so ing useless teammate, said Satsuki in frustration as she pulled the collar of Naruto's shirt and glared at him, their face were an inch apart from each other, making Yukumo to blush, Obito to giggle and write something on a piece of paper and Koyuki to jealous. The genin with blank expression only stared at Satsuki and poked her forehead. WH what the hell? Don't you ever ever touch me, you got it. Can you let me go Uchiha san? Thank you, Sweden. Sweden no jutsu. Naruto expelled a large quantity of water that took the form of a powerful torrent and knocked off Dodo from the railway as well as destroying his chakra armor and watched him fell to his death. Mission accomplished. Good grief, this is seriously a bored mission. Time skip. Half an hour later. I can't thank you enough for helping me claiming back my land and saving my life," said Koyuki to the Team 12 as she bowed before them which they did the same thing. She then stared at Naruto and at his cheek, causing the usually blank expression Genin to blush and glared at Obito who's giggling. Soon this land will be known as Land of Spring and once the time has come, I will make an alliance with Konoha as a token for saving me. Ah it's nothing Koyuki-sama. We wish you luck and we hope that we will meet again under different circumstances said Obito to Koyuki who smiled and gave him an Icha Icha that made him stunned, blushed madly and screamed like a madman. Cha! She signed my book. I'm going to make that stupid Kakashi to jealous after this. Somewhere unknown location, Achu. A certain Jonin with silver hair and wear mask sneezed right before he fought a man with spiky hair and wield a large blade. Damn it, I'm pretty sure Obito is having something that I don't have. Ah whatever, where were we just now? right back to Obito. Don't mind him. Said Yukumo and received a nod and giggle from Koyuki. Take care Koyuki-sama and if you need help, feel free to ask Konoha. Yeah and we'll be the one to help you first. 
said Satsuki with a proud tone and watched Naruto slapped Obito's back to make him stop giggling or screaming. Buffoons. An hour later, good grief, I thought that stupid people with chakra armor are difficult to defeat but turns out. Satsuki-chan. The reason why we easily defeat them is because teamwork. The greater the teamwork is, the easier the opponent to lose. Obito gave a thumbs up to the scowling Satsuki while Yukumo agreed with what he said. The elder Uchiha then stared at Naruto who's been silenced since they departed from Yukigakure. Naruto, thinking about your girlfriend? I don't have girlfriend Obito-sensei. Even if I have, at least I don't scream or giggle over a pervert book that's signed by one of the actresses who played the adapted film. Satsuki and Yukumo laughed wryly at the comically crying Obito who chanting why as Naruto only shook his head. They then saw a bird circling above them which Obito widened his eyes and let the bird landed on his shoulder. Taking the note that tied to its leg, Obito read it and cursed himself. All right my cute little genin, we need to head to different direction because Team 7 is in a great danger. Said Obito as he stared at Naruto to see any reaction. The reaction that Naruto gave him made him shocked slightly, annoyed. Do we really need to help Sensei? After all they have two Janin that are very powerful. Not only that but the Genin are the children of Hokage and capable of taking care of themselves. Said Naruto with a scowl to Obito. Damn Minato-san. I was about to relax and play Shogi with Toborama Gigi but. Naruto whether we hate that person or not, we need to save them because it's our duty to help our comrades and save innocent people. Didn't I tell you? Those who break the rules are scum but those who abandon their friends are worse than scum. Naruto only looked at Obito and released a sigh. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. Location. Team 7 location Kakashi dashed backward to avoid a slash from Zabuza and threw a kanai at him which he avoided it. The nuke nin of Kirigakure then quickly performed a tiger hand seal that Kakashi immediately knew what is it and prepared his own technique to protect himself. Sweden. Suigonda. Sweden. Sujihenki. The water drilling projectile that rose from the underwater collided with the water wall, protecting Kakashi who's thinking a way to save Kashina from Zabuza who had trapped her inside a water sphere prison. He also need to think a way to save his genin that protecting Tazuna while facing a Mizu Bunshin of Zabuza. Kakashi. Just leave me and go save my children, screamed the trapped Kashina to Kakashi who clenched his fist tightly before watched Zabuza's clone kicking away Mito. Mito chan. Damn you. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. Menma created two clones that charged at Zabuza and attempted to hit him with a kick and a punch, but the clone easily cut down Menma's shadow clones and punched him onto the ground. D damn it. Run Umi chan. Run as far as you can with Tazuna san. Uh. Zabuza's clone stomped Menma's stomach and charged at the running Natsumi with a terrifying Tazuna. The Konoha shinobi especially Kashina watched in horror as the Mizu Bunshin getting near Natsumi and brought down his blade. Natsumi-chan. Clang. Natsumi closed her eyes and slowly turned around to see Naruto blocking the massive blade with his Hakai. Satsuki and Yukumo then appeared and grabbed away Menma and Mito while Obito appeared behind Zabuza and thrusted his kanai into the back of his head but Zabuza quickly kawarimi and by doing so, he let go of Kashina. I afraid if you want her. You gotta get through me first," said Naruto to the clone who stunned to see the serious face of the genin and jumped away to create a distance. After all, the eldest must protect his siblings right? Natsumi looked at her eldest brother standing before her. Happiness could be described of her right now but that happiness turned into sadness when Naruto slowly turned around and stared at her with eyes filled up. Disappointment. She flinched with tears slowly coming out from her as Naruto walked towards Zabuza's Mizu Bunshin while radiating his killer intent that caused even the Janins to sweat especially Kashina and Kakashi who never expected the dead last of the academy could release a terrifying killer intent. The person that's slowly walking towards the clone of former member of Seven Swordsmen of the Mist is not a mere genin but a merciless warrior to his enemy. You got some terrifying killer intent Gaki. What's your name? Naruto. And may I know what's my first true opponent name? Momochi Zabuza of Kirigakure no Kijin, Demon of the Hidden Mist. Naruto only looked at the clone with a blank expression before charged at it so fast that it appeared he disappeared from thin air. They then saw Naruto stood behind the clone as it dissolved into a burst of water. Zabuza reacted first as he nearly dropped his Kabikirabocho. He never seen someone move that fast especially a genin who's still fresh from academy. 
The nuke Nin for the first time after many years felt excited as the genin that destroyed his clone is not just an ordinary genin. Kashina widened her eyes and absolutely shocked at her son's ability. She never expected that he could be this amazing and started to question herself. Who trained Naruto? There's no way he trained by himself until he reached the speed of low-level cage. Kakashi too like Kashina, absolutely shocked at Naruto's ability. Despite he not really close to Naruto as he favors more Menma, he believed Naruto is someone with mysterious yet amazing powers and ability but he never expected that he will be that amazing, cutting down a Mizu Bunshin less than a second. Not even his genin capable of doing that. Obito could only grin at what he saw which both Kashina and Kakashi noticed with the redhead woman going to ask several questions about her Naru Chan from him. Menma clenched his fist tightly as he gritted his teeth. This is the reason why he hates his brother and wish to make everyone hates him. It will always be him. No matter how many times Menma strive to be the best and attempt to do something that will make everyone shocking and amaze, it will be always Naruto who is one no, ten steps ahead of him. The second eldest swore that he will be more better than Naruto and will show him his true place even if the gods blessed his elder brother. Mito only widened her eyes as she couldn't feel anything but amaze and jealous over her eldest brother. He was abandoned at the young age and has no one yet he proved himself to everyone that he's better than any of them. Mito clenched her fist tightly and swore that she will be the same level of Naruto and then she will fix their relationship. Natsumi who's been crying just now only silent at Naruto's gaze upon her. She couldn't believe that despite being trained by her father, her mother and her Orochimaru Gigi, Naruto still better than her. She promised herself she will be the same level or perhaps more higher than him so that he won't look at her with disappointment anymore. Satsuki gawked at the dead last of the academy. She then scowled as this is one of the reason why her parents prefer Naruto over her and even her brother told her how amazing Naruto is. She stared at Naruto with hatred which the wielder of Hakai could sense it but ignores it and promised that she will awaken her Sharingan and show to her family which one is better, Naruto or her. Yakumo only stunned and started to feel regret for calling him dead last. Perhaps he's truly strong and concealed his strength due to not having lots of friends like her, Satsuki or the saviors of Konoha. She promised to herself that she will fix her relationship with Naruto and hopes he could forgive her. Their thoughts were broken when Naruto took a fighting stance that the Jonins and Zabuza to widen their eyes, right leg forward with two hands tightening the grip of the weapon while raising the weapon at their side. The blue flash style, Aoi Senko, the one of the most dangerous kenjutsu style that created by Senju Tobarama. If Naruto knew the blue flash style then it means Tobarama is the one who trained him. That means, Naruto is Tobarama's apprentice, the same man who rejected hundreds if not thousands of Konoha's shinobi to be trained under him. The blue flash style is considered to be one of the most dangerous because its attack consisted of quick slashes followed by parry and rapid thrust that aiming the vital points. Unlike Uzumaki's spiral whirlwind style, Razen Senpu, that focus on only attacking or Uchiha's eternal flame, Ayan Anu, that focus on defending and counterattack, Tobarama's blue flash style focus on attacking and avoiding within second. This is the reason he is considered to be one of the god of shinobi as well as the reason why he survived from Kinkaku's unit decades ago. What are you waiting for old man? Come and get me. Said Naruto with a smirk and mock tone to Zabuza who's tightening his grip on the handle of Kabikirabocho. You're having a death wish aren't you? Asked Zabuza as he noticed that Kashina and Kakashi ready to attack him while Obito only looked at Naruto and smiled. Looks like Obito no Sharingan. Obito the Sharingan, has faith in you. He is. My senseis always have faith in me unlike Kakashi no Sharingan. Kakashi the Sharingan, a red hot-blooded habanero. Akai Chisio no habanero, said Naruto as he watched Zabuza slowly walking towards him. Zabuza-san, why don't you call your five friends to stop hiding and instead block my teammates from interfere our duel? Zabuza widened his eyes and stared at the smiling Naruto with amaze and excited. He signaled his friends to stop hiding and attack the Konoha's shinobis if any of them decide to help Naruto. You're an amazing kid but too bad this will be the last time you wield Hakai. I'm going to take that sword and sell to Iwa or Kumo. Do you want this? Come and get me. Both of them charged at each other and delivered a strike that caused their blades to lock against each other with sparks showering. They jumped away before disappeared from everyone's sight and engaged in a high-speed kenjutsu match. Ka Chan. Shouldn't we help Naru Ni? Asked Natsumi to Kashina who was about to answer but one of Zabuza's friends interrupted her. 
You little tomato if you move one step ahead, we all will cut the head of your senseis for interfering the battle between the swordsmen. Don't you dare threatening my child, Hazuka Manjetsu, said Kashina to the man shoulder length white hair and wears dark, high collared button shirt. You and your brother, Hazuka Suigetsu, will be dead before you even notice if you harm my daughter. Suigetsu, the brother to Manjetsu only chuckled and said, Looks like she cares more of her daughter who do nothing instead of her son who's fighting against the most powerful of seven swordsmen of the mist. Their attention shifted to the loud sound blade colliding against blade, they watched Naruto and Zabuza trading's attack that either one of them parry or block. Both swordsmen jumped away and stared at each other before dashed towards their opponent and delivered a swing that collided their blade against each other with sparks showering. Not bad kid. You're not just a mere genin. You're not bad to old man. Enraged by what Naruto called him, Zabuza freed his blade and delivered several monstrous strength that Naruto blocked all of it. Seeing that he's getting exhaust on defending himself due to how heavy the Kabikirabocho is with how powerful his attack, Zabuza tightened his grip onto the handle of the blade and swung it as strong as he could, aiming Naruto's which the genin blocked it but thrown away due to the brute strength. Quickly recovered, Naruto slowly rose up from his knees and stared at his right forearm that has a deep medium-sized cut. You're truly a gifted swordsman. If you're born at Kiri, I already take you as my apprentice. No thanks. I rather stick to the old man Nidam, he's more better than you," said Naruto to Zabuza who grinned and charged at Naruto before brought down his Kabikirabocho which Naruto blocked it. You shouldn't underestimate me. Zabuza raised his eyebrow as Naruto shifted his Hakai to free from the blade colliding and delivered a lightning speed slash that Zabuza could barely avoid it by jumping away. The nuke nin hissed in pain and gazed at the deep wound on his abdomen with his blood spilling out. Damn you Ingbrat. Now you will die said Zabuza as he charged towards Naruto and delivered several monstrous strikes at the genin. At the sidelines, the Konoha shinobi were all worried about Naruto with the exception of Obito who believed Naruto could defeat Zabuza and Menma who wished Zabuza killed his elder brother although he silently prayed for the safety of Naruto. For Zabuza's allies, neither of them show any worries until a young girl took off her Anbu mask, revealing her angelic face. Raiga-san, Kushimaru-san, Shouldn't we help Zabuza sama? Both tan man and masked man stared at the woman before returned their attention to Zabuza, who stabbed Naruto's right thigh and knocked him away. This is the duel between the swordsman Haku. It is not just a simple duel but also about the honor of a swordsman. This match means a lot to Zabuza because I've never seen he so happy like this, said Raiga as he witnessed Naruto cut Zabuza's back and slashed at his but missed it hit his chest instead. Not only that but also this match shows that we need to be at our prime level like years ago. Kushimaru watched Naruto received a deep slash across his back and stopped Kashina from helping his son with his Nuabari. I've told you, if you help him, I will kill you before you even notice it. Naru chan just give up. You can't win this match. He's a Jonin and you're just a Jenin. Kashina tensed up when Naruto received another slash on his back before returned it by stabbing Zabaza's thigh. Ka chan we should just help Naruto knee than standing here doing nothing. Don't interfere Mito. Mito eyed Menma with a face telling him are you ain't kidding me? As much as I hate to admit it, Naruto going to win this match. I don't think so. Said Kakashi as he heard a sickening sound of bone crushed, he watched Naruto fell to his knee and holding his broken left arm that had been broke by the flat surface of Zabuza's Kabikirabocho, Naruto's losing his stamina and his wounds slowing him down. Obito sensei, Yakumo was interrupted by Obito who raised his hand. I know Yakumo but we can't do anything. Even if I teleported to him, any of you could be killed the moment I touch Naruto. Kushimaru is extremely fast swordsman with his Nuabari and Raiga can directly stun any of us with his Kiba. Not only that but Manjetsu and his brother Suigetsu capable converting their bodies into liquid. Their attention shifted to Naruto's loud scream due to receive a deep slash by Zabuza on his back again causing them to horrify at the amount of the blood spilling out with how deep the wound is and could see his spine. Staring at Zabuza with his sapphirine eyes, Naruto dashed towards Zabuza and flipped over him at the last minute to avoid a fast swing and slashed his back twice, jumping away Naruto watched Zabuza turned around and glared at him as he tightened his grip onto the handle of the blade. Looks like I'm going to end your life with this one attack, said Zabuza as he flared up his chakra which caused everyone to see a silhouette of dark purplish demon any last wish. 
I don't have any last wish Zabuza-san, said Naruto as he too flared up his chakra, revealing everyone a silhouette of man in metallic dark armor with a platinum blade in his right hand, because I'm going to survive from you. Zabuza grinned at the panting heavily Naruto and waited for the right timing. They took a deep breath and charged at each other as they raised their blade. Anbu Mikazuki, Crescent Moon Dance, Oni no Akari, Demon's Wrath. Their strikes were so fast that not even Kakashi's Sharingan could perceive it. When they ended their attack, the water underneath them ripped ten feet long as Naruto fell to his knee and coughed up an enormous amount of blood, hissing at the pain of deep slash that could see his ribs. As for Zabuza, he grinned before coughed up blood and gazed at the deep stab below his right side of ribcage. Gazing at Haku, he and the others disappeared as Obito lifted the badly injured Naruto and asked Yukumo to heal him. Tazuna-san. Please lead the way to your home. We need to move now as quickly as possible. Tazuna nodded his head at Kakashi and led the way. The worry Kashina kept gazing at the unconscious Naruto and promised to herself that she's going to fix their relationship no matter whether he like it or not. Oh Kashina, you abandoned your son for so many years and even forgot his birthday several times and you expect he can forgive you and start a new relationship after what you and Minato did to him. Fool. When they arrived at Tazuna's home, they were greeted by a woman with long blue hair who immediately hugged Tazuna. Tu San. You made me worried. I thought you were kidnapped by some bandits because you told me you will be back at home by few hours ago. It's all right Tsunami. I was attacked by several people that worked for Gato and saved by these Konoha brave shinobis. Let's talk inside, one of the shinobis need medical attention. Tsunami nodded her head and allowed the Konoha shinobis entered her house before she closed and locked the door. She then gestured them to follow her to the guest rooms and informed them she's going to prepare the dinner. All right, we have four rooms, two rooms for women and another two for men okay, said Kashina which everyone nodded. Obito, I have something to ask you. Obito nodded his head and ordered Yukumo to follow him to his room to heal the unconscious Naruto's wounds, Kakashi only shrugged his shoulders and followed Menma to another room while the girls went to their room to rest leaving only Kashina who stood outside of Obito's room to watch her son. Naruto's mindscape Naruto opened his eyes and found himself in a void. He looked around and tried to move but couldn't before saw someone stood before him with a blank face. He has long dark wavy hair that tied into ponytail with short bangs with red tips and strange flame mark at the top of his forehead. He wears a red haori over an orange kimono with black hakama and a katana carried at the waist. He also wears a pair of Hanafuda earrings. Naruto then found himself seeing everything from the perspective of the man with strange mark. Naruto realized that that he's watching the man's memories with his divination. He believed that he's witnessing the person's memories which made quite shock cause according to Shisui. Divination allows someone to receive visions from the future but unpredictable not seeing someone's past. He casted away the thoughts and focused on the person's memory. From what he knew, the man with strange flame mark was born at the dawn of humanity. His name is Yorichi and known by everyone as the Founder King. He lives in the era where there's no chakra and only certain people possesses supernatural powers by the blessing of Yorichi. From what Naruto could understand from Yorichi's memories and the conversation he had, Yorichi was blessed by the gods with the power of light to purge the eternal darkness from the world. Naruto only chuckled and continued witnessing Yorichi's memories from he summoning phantom crystalline weapons from thin air to fight against legions of demons to the battle between him and a white-haired woman with golden eyes. At Yorichi's final strike to the mysterious woman, Naruto was ejected out of his own mindscape. Naruto slowly opened his sapphirine eyes and get up gently. The genin looked at his body that wrapped in bandages and looked around before noticed Obito's belongings, he walked downstairs and saw Obito reading a scroll. After finished reading the scroll, Obito kept it and noticed his student coming towards him slowly. Ah, Naruto. How do you feel? Asked Obito as Naruto sat down on the floor and yawned. How long was I out? Naruto unwrapped his bandages and smirked at the scars that he received from Zabuza and burnt the bandages with a simple kaiten jutsu. A week. Naruto only released a heavy sigh and looked at his body that have countless of scars. For him. This is the body of a true shinobi unlike his siblings aka the saviors of Konoha who doesn't have any single scar. Well he can't blame them though because the Kayubi will instantly heal their injuries and leave no scars. Anything interesting happened. Obito placed his fingers on his chin and snapped his finger as a light bulb suddenly appeared out of nowhere above his head. 
Kashina-sama tried to know about your training. So I told her. Flashback. A week ago. Obito-kun, I want to ask you several questions. Said Kashina with a stoic face to Obito released a sigh as he knew what she's going to ask. Who trained Naruto? Is it true that Toborama Oji-san took him as his apprentice? Quote. Information classified. Said Obito to Kashina. What? I'm his mother and how could you classify the information from his mother? Screamed Kashina to Obito as everyone came out from their room and gazed at Kashina. Mother? Tell me Kashina-sama since when you act like a mother to him? Have you ever act like a mother to him during those seven years? A period of time where you and your family abandoned him. Have you ever celebrate his birthday let alone remember it? Have you ever comfort him when he cry because the villagers who are so stupid attack and even try to kill him because they thought he has Kyubi's demonic soul after one of the stupid civilian councilmen spread the fake news? Have you ever comfort him when he lost his best friend and family? Have you ever been there and tell him, I'm proud of you, after he mastered a jutsu? Have you ever noticed his pain and loneliness? Kashina only stunned at what Obito told her. She never act like a mother to her eldest child who thirsts the love of family and proudly call herself as Naruto's mom or my Naruto chan or my son. Then she snapped, a civilian councilman spread fake news about Naruto having Kyubi's demonic soul. How come she never know that? How come her Minato never know about it? Let me tell you something Uzumaki-san, you're just someone who share the same blood with him. You're not his mother because he stopped considering you as his mother. Even Makoto-san and Fugaku-sama act more like a parents to him. I'm not surprised if Satsuki hates Naruto. If you want to know so much about him, why don't you try ask Toborama-sama? Oh wait, I forgot, he won't tell any single thing about his apprentice to you even if your husband ordered him because he hates what you and Minato-sensei did to Naruto. If that's all, then I need to take care of my student, have a good day Kashina-sama. Flashback end. Then she bursted into tears and every day will visit you asking you for forgiveness for what she did to you. Surprisingly, Mito and Natsumi also did the same thing. Naruto only silent at what Obito told him and looked away, feeling annoying and disgust at their actions. For him, why will you need to give another chance to someone who hurt you before? He was busy with his thought that he didn't hear what Obito saying to him. Hello Naru-chan. Stop it Aero Baka sensei What did you said just now? Obito fake cry at Naruto who only sweat drop at his sensei's childish antic. The elder Uchiha stared at Naruto with a serious face and said, Zabuza is still alive. I see. Obito arched his eyebrow at Naruto who only stared at him without any expression. You don't seem to surprise at all. Right now, only Kakashi and Kashina-sama other than both of us know that Zabuza is still alive. Something's wrong? I see. There's nothing wrong. I think I'm going to train for a while. I'll be right back before dinner, please excuse me. And so, Naruto left Tazuna's house and went to the deeper part of the forest, ignoring Natsumi who shouting at him to join her training session. Time skip. Dinner later, everyone. Zabuza is still alive. What? Kashina glared at Menma who not only screamed but also slammed the table, nearly causing everyone's food to fly away. The second eldest of Minato and Kashina rubbed the back of his head sheepishly and said sorry to Tsunami who only chuckled. Kashina sensei, but how's that possible? We saw he sustained serious injuries. Yukumo said to Kashina who was about to answer the question but Naruto beat her up. Appearance can deceive your eyes. I sustained injuries that more worse than him yet I alive and besides the injuries that I inflict on him won't cause his death said Naruto as he finished his food and noticed that everyone looked at him like he's a ghost. What? Oh oh nothing at all. Just what you said earlier, appearance can deceive your eyes. Who taught you that? Asked Kashina to Naruto, hoping that she will know some information about him. Mind your own business. Replied Naruto coldly that made everyone flinched especially Kashina. Let's focus on the main mission, when will Zabuza come back? Two weeks. He'll be back in two weeks with his friends to assault us. Kakashi spoke to everyone. Kakashi was about to continue when suddenly Tsunami's only child, Tazuna, slammed his fist to the table. Why all of you bother to try? You guys just waste your time and lives to stop Gado. There's no way any of you can kill him and his men. Only strong will live while the weak will only end up suffering and die. Inari screamed at the Konoha shinobis with the gaze filled with hatred. Don't worry Inari. I'm going to free your country and make sure you live happily, Datbeo, 
shouted Menma as he gave thumbs up at Inari. Fool! You're stupid to think if you can end Gato's life, you guys. Are you done brat? Asked Naruto to Inari who clenched his fist tightly and glared angrily at the blank expression Genin. What did you just called me? Stupid brat. Why we even bother to try? Are you an idiot or a coward or both? Naruto said in cold tone with his icy gaze made Inari flinched and shivered in fear. We risk our life and leave our family behind to save innocent people like you and you call this fool. You should have grateful instead of stuck your stupid coward attitude up your ass and screamed at us, telling it's useless to stop Gato and his men. I it's hopeless. My hero, Kaiza, he was murdered by Gato even though he promised me to free the country from Gato and his men. Screamed back Inari who's crying. And by calling people who try to save your ass stupid, it means not only you disrespect our help but also disrespect Kaiza's promise and dream. Naruto replied back angrily to Inari who flinched again and fell on his butt. You should be lucky to have a family that cares about you. You have a mother who didn't abandon you. You weren't beaten and glared for your whole life. You never feel alone and you don't even experience great tragedy so do us a favor, shut up and stop complaining or whining like a bitch about we are not going to kill Gato and his men. Naruto rose up and left the house to the jungle but not before gave a death glare at Inari who immediately cried and ran to his room which Tsunami chased after him. Sensei. What Naruto say is just to make Inari afraid isn't it? He never experienced those what he said before right? Asked Yukumo to Obito, not noticing the Namikaze Uzumaki family looked down in shame with the exception of Menma who continued eating his food although wondered has he elder brother experienced those what he said earlier. It's not my place to say it but I will tell you that he never has a happy childhood. He stopped showing his emotion after he lost his only true friend. He already used up his tears to the point when he mentally hurt, he didn't give any shit nor express any feeling about it. Everyone gazed at Obito, wanting to know who is Naruto's only true friend. I'm not going to tell you who is Naruto's true friend. It's not my place to say. Trust me, he experienced countless of hardships that will make anyone of us insane. How he kept his fortitude is still amazes me. His will is stronger than anyone in this world. The dinner went into silence after they heard what Obito said which they blamed themselves for not being there for Naruto especially Kashina and her daughters. Naruto was fighting many of his clones and brutally defeated the last one by snapping its before he looked at the dark sky that have countless of stars as he clenched his fist tightly. Why I'm the one who suffer while everyone laugh and smile? Thought Naruto as he summoned Hakai and infused it with his chakra causing the blade to cover with flame. Just ignore it. No one cares about your emotion, pain and tears, Naruto. They are piles of trash that everyone disgust at it. Naruto then performed a dance consisted of 12 segments repeated throughout the night, if anyone watch his dance they will see Naruto as a spirit wielding flaming rather than a human. Unknown to him, five spirit that took the form of a gigantic person in different type of armor watching over him. A beautiful raven-haired girl in a grey kimono could be seen picking up different type of herbs. As Haku collecting the ingredients to use it as a medicine to heal Zabuza's injuries, she froze when she turned around and saw the sleeping peacefully Naruto. She secretly took her senbon and prepared to kill Naruto but was surprised when Naruto grabbed her wrist before she could reach out for his. Mind telling me what are you trying to do? Asked Naruto with a blank expression to Haku. I saw you fell asleep there. It's very cold out here in the forest and I try to wake you up but you grabbed my wrist. Haku said in a gentle tone and watched Naruto let go off her wrist immediately. I'm sorry. I thought a shinobi tried to kill me. Said Naruto as he slowly rose up and saw Haku's bucket that filled with herbs. Only one person came up to his mind, Zabuza. Herbs. Mind if I know why you gathering herbs? Ah, these herbs are for my father. He was attacked by bandits few days ago said Haku to Naruto who nodded his head and pretended to believe the story while in truth he knew Haku's lying thanks to his emotions sensing ability. Well then, why don't I help you gather the herbs? I'm pretty sure my friends are still sleeping. Said Naruto Haku who surprised but accepted his offer. They then introduced themselves and together picked up the herbs. Suddenly. Naruto-san. I want to know why you train so hard. Haku stared at Naruto who gave her a smile that made her blushed. I trained so hard to protect my precious people, said Naruto to Haku who smiled at his answer and finished picking up the herbs. As they were about to part ways, Naruto who walked to Tazuna's house called out for her. See you soon Haku-san, 
Send my regards to Zabuza. Tell him, I'll be waiting for him and make sure he fully recover. Naruto walked to Tazuna's house, leaving a completely shocked Haku as she wondering why he didn't kill her when there's an opportunity. When he entered Tazuna's house, he saw Kashina discussing with Menma, Mito and Natsumi about their affinities. They tested their affinities. Menma have lightning and earth, Mito have water and fire, Natsumi have wind and water. Anuru chan Since you're here can we know your affinity? To be honest, not only Naruto annoyed at Kashina but also felt deep repugnance when she called him Naru chan He was about to ignore Kashina but decided against it and gave her answer. Information classified. Please mind your own business and your children, Kashina-sama. As Naruto was about to leave to his room, Menma grabbed his wrist tightly and glared angrily at him. Listen here you dead last piece of shit. Stop acting like you a royal king and accept the fact that you're no one and nobody cares about a loser like you. Naruto only stared at Menma with a blank expression and narrowed his eyes when Menma tightened his grip around his elder brother's wrist. Annoyed at the royal attitude of his brother, Naruto immediately punched Menma onto the ground and kicked him in the face, breaking his nose and walked away. Annoying brat. Several hours later all right everyone. Today we're going to learn some new jutsus, said Kashina with excited tone to both members of team 7 and 12. I will teach water-based jutsu. Kakashi will teach lightning and earth-based jutsu and Obito will teach fire-based jutsu. As soon as she said that, everyone split up. Mito and Natsumi went to Kashina, Menma went to Kakashi and Naruto, Yukumo and Satsuki went to Obito. Kashina frowned. She wished that her eldest son will join him so that she can fix her mistakes to him. The red-haired Jonin released a sigh and tried another way to persuade her son join her. Naru Chan, I can teach you wine-based jutsu if you want or rosin senpu. Thank you for your offer but I refuse to accept it. I need to learn some kaiden jutsus from Obito Sensei, said Naruto with an annoyed face and turned around so that he won't stare at Kashina's pleading face. Sensei, let's go. Obito only nodded his head and led his genin to the deep forest. When they arrived at the suitable location to train, Obito looked at them with a grin. All right my cute genin, today I'm going to teach you two kaiden jutsu that you all need to master it within three days. The first one is kaiden. Hosanka no jutsu, fire style. Phoenix sage fire jutsu, a C rank offensive and short range jutsu. The hand seals are rat, tiger, dog, ox, rabbit, tiger. Obito spat a fireball that burst into a volley of small fireballs into air. Yakumo and Satsuki watched in awe the wildly movement of the fireballs and stunned to see Obito controlling each of the individual flames with his chakra before let the fireballs destroy a tree, turning it into ashes. Once you manage to perform this jutsu perfectly, I'll teach how to manipulate the flames with chakra. I will also teach how to hide shuriken within the flames and control it movement so that the jutsu will be more deadly said Obito to Yukumo and Satsuki who nodded their head while Naruto only silent as he knew and mastered the jutsu long time ago. As for the second is one of my personal favorite jutsu, Kaiten. Kan Senpu, Fire Style, Flame Whirlwind. Everyone watched fire erupts around Obito's body in a spiraling manner. Then he launched the jutsu with his hands towards the tree, causing it to turn into ashes. A C-rank offensive jutsu and short to mid-range. The hand seals are monkey, bird, dog and ram. Sensei, I'll be training my another kenjutsu style. I already mastered dozens of kaitenjutsu including the one that you demonstrated earlier. Obito smiled at what Naruto said and felt proud that his late best friend did a great thing to teach Naruto in kaiten based ninjutsu. He then guided both Yukumo and Satsuki who were having any trouble to perform kaiten. Hosenka no jutsu, fire style, phoenix sage fire jutsu. Meanwhile for Kakashi and Menma, the former will teach him one raiden based jutsu and one doden based jutsu. Alright Menma, the raiden based jutsu is raiden dan, abuki, lightning style bullet, powerful breath. Kakashi created a condensed surge of lightning in his fist and thrusted it forward, unleashing a powerful lightning bolt. Created 10 cage bunshin to learn this jutsu. The second jutsu is doden. Doryuden, earth style, earth dragon bully. Kakashi created a dragon-like head mud to shoot mud balls at the trees. He then ordered Menma to create another 10 cage bunshin, shadow clone, to learn the Doden Jutsu. Alright Menma, now I will strengthen your physical by having you to wear these. 
Menma caught four bracelets and wore it onto his wrists and ankles before infused his chakra into it just like what Kakashi instructed. Immediately, he fell to the ground and tried to get up but found that it's too heavy. That's weighted tools. All you have to do is simple, dodge my attack, said Kakashi before he proceeded to pummel Menma brutally. As for Kashina, she taught both Mito and Natsumi Sweden, Daitapodama, water style, great gunshot, and Sweden, Sandin no jutsu, water style, scattering bullets jutsu, she couldn't hide her sad face as she watched both of her daughters trying to perfect Daitapodama. Ka Chan, I wonder if Naru Ni will forgive us? asked Mito to Kashina who released a heavy sigh and crossed her arms. I don't know Mito Chan but one thing for sure I won't give up, Databane. Kashina gave a thumbs up to Mito, causing Mito to nod her head happily and continue perfecting Sweden. Daitapodama, water style, great gunshot, Umi Chan. What's wrong? Ka Chan, when Naru Ni saved me from Zabuza, he gave me a disappointed look, said Natsumi with teary eyes as Kashina quickly hugged her youngest child. Don't worry, I'll train both of you until he look at you proudly all right. Now girls, continue your lesson with one goal. To make your eldest brother proud. Natsumi smiled as she wiped her tears and continued perfecting Daitapodama with Kashina staring at her daughter with a proud face, knowing that her eldest child will proud of them. The next morning, morning everyone. Every genin replied Kakashi's greeting as he sat beside Obito who's reading a letter. Seconds later, Kashina came down from her room and noticed that someone is missing. Obito kun, where's Naru chan? He's been training since last night after telling me he can't sleep well. I think he's still training right now, replied Obito after he finished reading his letter and kept it inside the pocket or his pants. Yes, Satsuki Chan. I'll go tell him we're going to have breakfast besides, I got something to ask him, said Satsuki politely to Obito and left the party to search for Naruto, ignoring the glares from both Mito and Natsumi. When she arrived at the forest, she saw Naruto dancing with Hakai covered in flame. She saw the dance and found it way too beautiful. She watched Naruto finish the flaming dance with a vertical slash followed by a horizontal. Something's wrong Satsuki-san? Asked Naruto without looking at her as he stared at the blade that given to him by Tobarama. It's breakfast time and I have something to ask. Naruto stared at her and nodded his head. Do you angry at me for treating you badly? Angry. Why will I be angry? I only angry at Kashina-sama and her family for what they did to me. They deserve an endless excruciating judgment by the gods," said Naruto without any expression to Satsuki. Ah I see, you must be referring both Makoto-san and Fugaku-san isn't it? You took them away from me. Satsuki glared at Naruto, clenching her fist tightly. She swore that if Naruto is truly dead last, she will beat him into bloody pulp. You took them from me and act like you don't know? All Naruto replied to Satsuki was raising his hand and said. When was the last time you treat them with respect even though Fugaku-san keep comparing Itachi to you and your brother? Satsuki stunned as she couldn't remember. Can't remember? It is the day before Izumi slaughtered majority of Uchiha's clansmen. You blamed your father for not saving your best friend and you blamed your mother for not helping your father to protect your people. You blamed them for not showing the true strength of an elite clan and for not maintaining the pride of the mighty Uchiha clan. Let me list all of your mistakes to your parents. I, when your parents try to say something, you will ignore them or shout at them, telling how useless and weak they are. When they waiting for you and your brother to join dinner with them, you leave them waiting for hours because you both training until the next morning, obsess with killing Izumi to restore the glory of your clan. When they waited for you at outside of the Konoha's academy as soon as you graduated as the first student in our class, you ignored their compliment and told them not to wait for you because you want to train. Worst of all, you nor Sasuke didn't even bother to wish your mother's birthday, making her cry for the whole night. I was there with Itachi and your father, celebrating her birthday. You should have seen her face that time for what you did to her. And now you blamed me for taking them away from you. Did you hit yourself so hard until you forgot what you did to the Muchiha sama Satsuki could only silent and looked at the ground with shame, nothing to say nor having the courage to stare at Naruto right now. Both of them stood there for a minute before went to Tazuna's house to have some breakfast. After helping Tsunami by washing the dishes, Naruto then offered himself to help Tazuna to build the bridge with his cage bunshin after all of Tazuna's co-workers decided to quit, believing that their attempt to take down Gato is useless. The rest of the week, 
both Team 7 and Team 12 spent their time with training and guarding the bridge from any of Gato's thugs. Five days later Team 12 except for Naruto who asleep in his room went to the nearly complete bridge to rotate with Team 7 who's guarding the bridge. Kakashi saw someone's missing and asked, where's Naruto? Oh, he's sleeping after training yesterday from dusk to dawn, said Obito with a smile before he noticed that mist started to appear. Looks like he's finally here eh Kakashi? Kakashi nodded his head as he closed and kept his Icha Icha book inside his pouch and drew a kanai from his pouch with Kashina tightening her grip onto her katana's handle. Menma following suit, as he quickly stood before Mito and Natsumi with Yakumo and Satsuki guarded behind them while Obito stood beside his best friend. The atmosphere was broken when they heard a chuckle from Zabuza. Ah where's the brat? Zabuza's question was replied with a silence as the group tensed a bead of sweat falling down the genin's head while Kakashi's and Obito's Sharingan spinning furiously. Then, six silhouettes were visible as they approached the group. I'm sorry but he's not going to fight you because you're going to die today, said Kashina with a serious face as she revealed her black ring hilted with red-bladed katana, Uzu no Ken, sword of swirl. Peefed, whatever. Haku and Suigetsu. You both fight against the genin while the rest of us preparing to slaughter and take those Sharingan to Kumo. Satsuki, Yakumo, don't worry. Kakashi and I are not going to die even though we are outnumbered, said Obito with a smirk while Kakashi chuckled softly. Because we both are the deadly duo that no one can defeat, not even Zabuza. Kakashi finished Obito's sentences and watched the genin nodded their head and wished them luck as they went to different location to fight against Haku and Suigetsu. Well, Obito, it's been a long time eh? Don't stuck on your chewing gum like last time. Geez, you still remember about that? I thought you already forgot about that. Obito glared at the smiling Kakashi and focused his attention to the enemy. Ready Kakashi. As always. Hope you both won't slow us down. Said Kashina with a soft laughter that made Kakashi and Obito grin. The Konoha's Janin charged towards the former member of Seven Swordsmen of the Mist preparing to defeat them despite being outnumbered by the swordsmen. Shifted scene Yakumo, Satsuki, Menma, Mito and Natsumi versus Haku and Shugitsu as their bosses fighting against each other, the subordinates charged at each other when Satsuki and Yakumo launched Katen, Hosenka no Jutsu, Firestyle, Phoenix Sage Fire Jutsu, at both Haku and Suigetsu which they avoided. Mito then quickly threw a volley of Kanai followed by Natsumi who launched Sweden. Daitapodama, water style, great gunshot, at them but to their shock, those two shinobi easily avoided it without any trouble. Damn it. Raiden Dan, Abuki, lightning style bullet, powerful breath. To Menma's horror, Haku blocked it with a wall of ice and launched a thousand long needles from the nearby water at Menma but Satsuki quickly protected him by launching Kaden. Gokaku no Jutsu, fire style, great fireball Jutsu. TCH, I got that. Ah shut up. You owe me for saving your ass. Said Satsuki before noticed that Suigetsu appeared beside her with his right arm enlarged. Suigetsu knocked Satsuki away and proceeded to punch Yukumo and kicked Mito onto the ground. Seeing their friends getting hurt because of Suigetsu, Natsumi berserkly attacked Suigetsu but received hundreds of needles to her back. Looks like only you left alone. Said Suigetsu with a grin before dissolved into water as Haku trapped Menma and Natsumi within a dome of mirrors made of ice. At the same time, unaware to Team 7 and 12, two Gato's men arrived at Tazuna's house and burst in before one of them grabbed Tsunami quickly and placed his machete to her throat while the another one stared at her body with. Hey, this is Tazuna's daughter, right? What about we ravage her body before let Gato taste her? Sounds good. Besides, she smells delicious. Tsunami was about to scream but the man that grabbed her closed her mouth with his hand and ed her while another one grinned and groped her chest. Suddenly, Inari came and hit the guy that groped his mother's chest with a stick. The angry thug turned around and kicked Inari away before prepared to kill him by cutting his as Tsunami screamed in horror. Inari who saw the incoming blade quickly closed his eyes as he wished he's strong as Kaiza but felt weird when he felt no pain. Slowly opening his eyes he saw the thug that tried to kill him was killed via kanai lodged into his skull while another thug that ed Tsunami's was murdered by Naruto by snapping his. Tsunami-san, I'm so sorry for late. It's okay Naruto-kun, thank you for saving us. Said Tsunami who cried and hugged Inari tightly while Naruto only smiled and went to Inari's side. What you did was a brave thing Inari, 
Only a hero will do that. Now you take care of your mother okay? I'll deal with Gado's thugs, said Naruto as he ruffled Inari's hair and brought the thug's corpse to outside of the house and burnt it with a katan jutsu. He then quickly went to the bridge to save his teammates from their opponent as Inari rushed towards the village with his mother following her right behind. The location where Genin of Team 12 and 7 vs Suigetsu and Haku. Ni Chan. Don't worry Natsumi, Ni Chan will protect you, said a panting heavily Menma to the terrifying Natsumi as he launched another Raiden Dan. Abuki, lightning style bullet, powerful breath, at Haku's reflection. Arg. Where the is she? Here. Menma turned around and received a powerful kick to his gut by Haku. He saw an incoming fist to his face which Menma dodged it and delivered a powerful punch to her face, shattering her mask. Before he could attack her again, Haku launched another thousand of long needles at him, making him stunned and fell to his knees at the excruciating pain. This battle ends now. Now, both of you will die. Ni Chan. Sweden. Sandan no Jutsu. Water style. Scattering bullets Jutsu. Natsumi sent a wide volley of water bullets at the ice mirrors in attempt to destroy. Her instinct told her to duck which she did to avoid Haku's lightning speed kick. Natsumi quickly delivered a kick but Haku jumped into the mirror to avoid it. Surrender or you will die. Said Haku coldly to Natsumi who slowly removed the needles from Menma. She really hoped that the two of them won't continue their battle because she know, if they continue to fight her, they will die. But, both Menma and Natsumi refused to give up as they stared at Haku's reflections with anger. They won't give up and will continue to fight despite knowing that they will die. Using Kayubi's chakra, the two of them launched Raiden Dan, Abuki and Sweden, Daitopodama together at one of the ice mirror, which at first not effect but they infused their Kayubi chakra into their jutsu and destroyed it, shocking Haku who quickly avoided the deadly technique and launched thousands of ice needles at the two of them. Menma and Natsumi avoided the ice needles and rushed towards Haku, intending to kill her but Haku quickly performed Sweden. Swiryuden no Jutsu, water style. Water bullet dragon Jutsu, at them and quickly used the water source to create a more powerful Sensatsu Suisho. Thousands of needles that coming at them with lightning speed. Before the needles could attack them, suddenly 15 different types of transparent glowing crystalline weapons appeared from thin air and circling around both Menma and Natsumi protecting them from the needles and at the same time caused them to free from Kayubi's influence. What the? Haku who watched the weapons was stunned and saw Naruto carrying both of his siblings while glaring hardly at Haku. Haku-san, this battle is over. Gato is planning to betray you and your comrades, I suggest it is wise to end this fight now, said Naruto coldly to Haku who shivered in fear at his gaze and watched him rush towards Suigetsu. Quickly. Haku went to Zabuza and Kushimaru who's fighting against Kashina. Location where Satsuki, Yakumo and Mito fighting against Suigetsu. Aura. Suigetsu launched a powerful punch to Mito that sent her flying away and quickly liquefied himself to avoid Satsuki's roundhouse kick. He then appeared not too far from her and saw Yakumo rush towards her before through a volley of shurikens which he grinned and used his tanto to deflect all of it but he made a mistake when he gazed at Yakumo's light brown eyes. Suddenly. Yakumo disappeared from Suigetsu's sight. He then surrounded by several bean vines that bind his body and lifted him to air. A bean pod then rises from the ground, revealing Yakumo with a kanai, ready to strike Suigetsu but shocked when Suigetsu managed to break free the illusion and kick Yakumo in the stomach. Kaden. Gokaku no Jutsu, fire style, great fireball jutsu. Satsuki launched a blazing orb at Suigetsu who knew that he couldn't liquefy himself to dodge it. Instead, he counterattacked with Sweden. Suji Henki, water style, water wall. Satsuki was about to launch Katen. Hosenka no Jutsu, fire style, Phoenix Sage Fire Jutsu, at Suigetsu but jumped away when he threw a water shuriken at her. She then quickly threw a kanai to him but he liquefied himself and let it slip through his fluid form before Suigetsu shot two water bullets from his fingers at Satsuki, hitting her and sending her crash to the ground. Katen. Enden. Fire style, flame bullet. Mito, who recovered from the punch, launched a stream of fire at Suigetsu, hitting him and completely obliterated him. I did it. Did you? Mito turned around and saw Suigetsu with a deadly glare swung his tanto, aiming her. She closed her eyes, accepting her death but tensed up slightly when she heard a loud clang. Opening her eyes, she saw a transparent glowing blue crystalline katana with wing ornament blocked the tanto. 
I suggest you to run to Zabuza to inform him that Gato is planning to betray you now, said Naruto with serious tone as a large chain saw like blade, a giant shuriken, a trident, a shield, a longsword and a katana with Mie surrounded Suigetsu. Now or I claim your life without hesitation. Suigetsu nodded his head and rushed towards his comrades, attempting to tell Zabuza about Gato's betrayal. Naruto saw Mido who cried and nodded his head as he laid down his siblings gently and went to Yukumo and Satsuki. You girls stayed here until you both can move. I'm going to warn our sensei about the upcoming danger, said Naruto with blank expression to both of them who nodded their head and watched Naruto ran towards their sensei. Scene shifted and exhausted and kneeling Kashina could be seen glaring hardly at a panting heavily Zabuza and an injured Kushimaru whose mask broken. The wife of Yellow Flash watched a tired Kakashi defeated Raiga while Obito were having trouble against Manjetsu who too having trouble to hit the Uchiha. Their battle came to an end when Gato with his armies appeared. The short ugly man clapped his hands, looks like the demon of the mist has reduced to baby of the mist. Ah Zabuza, easy to be fooled. Boys, killed them all except for that red-haired lady and those girls. We might want to enjoy their bodies after killing these assholes. Kashina. Haku and the arrived female Genin all shivered in fear at what they heard. They couldn't fight the fear and exhaustion that overcame them, the situation getting worsened when the armies gave them a creepy smile. Things quickly changed when Naruto stood before Zabuza with Hakai. Kid. HMPH, what an ugly brat you are. Kill him first for glaring at me. Are you talking about yourself? said Naruto in sarcastic tone that made the Konoha's shinobi and Kirigakir's nuke nin to burst into laughter. Some of Gato's thugs too laughed at what they heard. If you really want to kill me, sure, why not? Angry to see that smug face, Gato ordered his thugs to attack Naruto and bring the ladies to him. The thugs charged at Naruto who quickly summoned those weapons and killed all of them with ease, some lost their limbs, some were beheaded and others who were unfortunate cut into pieces. The massacre made everyone shocked with Kashina who couldn't believe what she saw while both Kakashi and Obito widened their eyes, Genin of Team 7 and 12 have the same response with Menma even vomited what he ate during the morning, Zabuza smiling as he remembered his academy graduation while at the same time horrified at how brutally Naruto killed them, Kushimaru, Raiga, and Manjetsu could only silent, Haku closed her eyes while Suigetsu already dissolved into a pool of water. The massacre ended when Naruto stood before Gato with the weapons circling around the short man. P please don't kill me. I'll do anything for you. I even give you everything that I have. Just say it. Money? Slaves? Anything but please spare my life. Naruto nodded his head and smashed Gato's face with his fist, breaking his nose. He then grabbed Gato's and threw him to the villagers that led by Inari and Tsunami. Inari. I think you know what to do with Gato right? Said Naruto to Inari who nodded his head and shouted. Torture him. The villagers cheered at what Inari said and dragged Gato to the place where he once publicly executed Kaiza. An hour later after the torture and execution of Gato, the land of Wave had finally been freed. Naruto with Obito went to Gato's warehouse to free the kidnapped women and took all Gato's money to give to each of the villagers. Both Konoha Shinobi and the Nuknin made peace with each other after the battle. The two groups even befriended with each other and had a dinner at Tizuna's house. The Konoha shinobi learned that the reason why they attempted to assassinate Yugura of the Yandaimi Mizukage was because he murdered those who have Kekai Jenke for no reason as well as corruption plaguing those in charge and the pursuit of power becoming paramount for many. Then, Obito told the real reason why Yugura did those things. It was revealed by Obito that Yugura was manipulated by Uchiha Izumi with a powerful genjutsu in order to use Kirigakure as her land, shocking Zabuza and his allies. Eventually, the time came for the two groups to leave Land of Wave. The two groups were hailed as heroes by the villagers for freeing their homeland especially Naruto. Here, inside this scroll contained lots of weapons and money from Gato's hideout, said Naruto as he gave the scroll to Zabuza who accepted and grinned. We'll meet again one day. We will. We all are forever in debt with you Naruto for helping us. You're a real hero, you freed Land of Wave and now you're going to help us free our homeland. Zabuza offered his hand to Naruto who accepted it and shook it. Thank you everyone. Zabuza and his comrades walk to an opposite direction that leads them to Land of Water but before they go, Haku quickly ed Naruto in his and hugged him, whispering that she's going to miss him, much to the female Genin's anger. 
The blonde genin only chuckled and nodded his head before waved his hand at the smiling Haku. As they walked to Konoha, Obito used this as an opportunity to tease Naruto. So Naruto, how does it feels like to have two beautiful girls you for your first mission? Sensei. Everyone laughed wryly at the sight of angry Naruto with flaming Hakai chasing after a screaming Obito who's begging Kakashi to save his life. After traveling from Land of Wave, Team 12 and 7 finally arrived at Konoha, gazing at the gate with a smile on their faces except for Naruto. Wishing to meet Tobarama to discuss something important, Naruto entered the Konoha and greeted both Azumo and Kotetsu who used to prank people with him and Shisui when they were bored. Yo Naruto. How's your first mission? Asked Azumo to Naruto who only nodded his head, signaling it was not bad. Any interesting thing happens. Naruto was about to answer Kotetsu's question but Obito quickly beat him up. Oh well, our first mission is super cool you know? My team escort the famous actress Fujikazi Yukie to Land of Snow and you knew what happened? Turns out her real name is Kazuhana Koyuki, the only child of the former daimyo Yuki no Kuni. And then, her uncle tried to kill her to rule the land but my cute potatoes genin beat them all especially Naruto who killed Dodo easily. And you know what happened next? Screamed Obito with his eyes became stars while Izumo and Kotetsu and Team 7 couldn't wait to hear what Obito going to say. Koyuki Haim ed Naruto's cheek and signed my ICHA ICHA. Immediately, Obito ran away from the angry Naruto as the latter chasing the Uchiha with Hakai. Obito laughed loudly and mocked Naruto by screaming like a girl, asking anyone to save him, which made everyone including the villagers in the Anbu that guarding the village sweat drop at his antic. Soon, Obito apologized to Naruto and told him that he won't tease the silent boy anymore which Naruto have doubt to believe it. Obito then went to the guard post to sign something on the paper and smirked. And then you knew what happened. We was supposed to return home but Minato sensei asked us to support team 7 at Nami no Kuni and so yeah. We fought against Zabuza, Raiga, Kushimaru, Manjetsu and Zabuza's apprentice, Haku, and Manjetsu's little brother, Suigetsu. So Naruto freed the land from Gatos and his thugs and the villagers praised him as a hero. Cool right? And here's the interesting moment. Haku ed Naruto's. Sensei. Both Azumo and Kotetsu gasped at what they heard and cried, unable to accept the fact that a mere genin like Naruto is so advanced an adult like them. They laughed when Naruto snatched his Icha Icha and attempted to burn it with Katen Jutsu which made Obito immediately groveled at Naruto's feet. Alright everyone. We gotta go to Hokage's office to submit our report before you guys can go home," said Kashina to everyone. When they arrived at Konoha's office, Naruto surprised to see Tobarama and Hiruzen discussing something with Minato. The retired cage saw the genin and excused themselves before greeted the genin especially Naruto. Saru Gigi, it's been a while eh? Indeed, Konohamaru kept bugging me about when we can visit you," said Hiruzen with a smile to Naruto as he chuckled and informed him tonight. All right then, goodbye Naruto-kun. Goodbye Gigi. Hey old man. Said Naruto casually to Tobarama, causing everyone's jaw to drop to the ground while Tobarama twitched his eyebrow and smacked the top of his head. Ouch. That's for being rude to your Hokage. Said Tobarama with a stoic face while he couldn't deny it's quite fun to see their reaction. You meant former Hokage, old man Sama. Naruto said before laughed at Tobarama and whispered to him. Wait for me at outside, I got something to discuss with you. Tobarama nodded his head and waited for Naruto at the outside of the office. Closing the door and turning around, Naruto looked at everyone who's staring at him. What? No, it just. You. Naruto interrupted Kashina by telling her mind her own business. Naruto, she's your mother, Naruto interrupted again by glaring him. Alright, Team 12, report. Alright Hokage-sama. As you know, we escorted the famous actress, Fujikazi Yukie, to Yuki no Kuni with her crew to film their movie at there. Things became suspicious when Yukie-sama wished to shoot the film as soon as possible. Then, we found out that Fujikazi Yukie's real name is Kazuhana Koyuki, the daughter to the late daimyo of Land of Snow. Then, rogue ninjas led by a tyrant known as Dodo appeared and attacked. Satsuki and Yakumo protected the crew members and Yukie Sama while both Naruto and I deal with Dodo and his subordinates. Things get worse when Dodo kidnapped Koyuki Haim while his subordinates surrounded us. Naruto then went to Dodo's location and saved Koyuki before killed Dodo, 
freeing the land, said Obito to Minato who raised up his hand and stared at him with angry face. Wait. You meant a simple C-rank escort mission became an A-rank for a squad of fresh genin. Obito, according to the rules, you should return back to Konoha or ask for backup because the mission's rank has changed. Do you know how dangerous it is? What will happen if any of them get hurt or possibly one of them die? Obito, I'm truly disappointed. Naruto slammed his fist to the table, breaking it in half as he gazed at Minato with a blank expression. You rather command us to return back to Konoha leaving them to die or wait for the backup to arrive while Doto and his thugs killing innocent people. What kind of a cage you are? Let me answer that for you, said Naruto coldly to Minato who flinched at the tone that he's using to the cage. Pathetic. And here I thought you're a genius but turns out you're pathetic, you know why? Because you're the only Hokage that doesn't know how to beat paperwork. We, Shinobi of Konoha, won't let people die for the sake of a mission. We will rather fail the mission than let innocent people die for the sake of a mission. Remember that. Minato watched Naruto calm down and stood beside the door, crossing his arms on his chest and closed his eyes. I'm sorry Obito. I shouldn't say those things. Naruto is right. Saving people are important than completing a mission. Remember that. Yes Hokage-sama, shouted everyone as they saluted at the smiling Minato. Now, what about Team 7? This time Kashina spoke, we were escorting Tazuna back to Land of Wave but the mission became B rank after the Demon Brothers tried to kill Tazuna. We then decided to ask a backup team, fearing that the mission getting worse which is true is not too long after that, we were attacked by Momochi Zabuza and his group, Kurasuki Raiga, Kurarare Kushimaru, Hazuka Manjetsu, Hazuka Suigetsu and Haku. The B rank mission immediately became A rank and Zabuza managed to trap both Kakashi and me. He created a Mizu Bunshin that beat Menma, Mito and was about to kill Natsumi who's protecting Tazuna but Naruto arrived and protected her. Then. Minato looked at Kashina with a confused face. He then stared at Kakashi who nodded his head and said. Naruto engaged Zabuza in a Kenjutsu match. The fight was intense with both of them received serious injuries until the two of them draw. Not only that but Naruto used blue flash style to fight against Zabuza. Minato widened his eyes and stared at Naruto. He decided he want to ask him several questions about his ability later as he want to hear the full report of the mission to Nami no Kuni. We arrived at Tazuna's house and weeks later Zabuza arrived with his subordinates to kill Tazuna. Naruto was resting at house and came to us as Gato arrived with his thugs to kill us and capture the Kunoichi. Since we are so tired, we unable to do anything but Naruto saved us by killed all the thugs and led Gato tortured and executed by the people of Land of Wave. Thus, he was named as hero by them and has a bridge named after him. Minato couldn't believe what he heard and felt really proud about his eldest son, freeing Yuki no Kuni and Nami no Kuni in just a month for his first mission. Not only that but his first mission is dual mission of a rank that made everyone jealous for that. Alright, all of you can go home. The reward will be collected by your sensei tomorrow. Dismiss and oh, Naruto, please stay for a while as well as Kashina. Naruto only released a sigh and nodded his head at his teammates who smiled at him while ignoring his siblings, much to their dismay. He then watched Minato activated the silence seal and stared at the smiling Minato. Naruto, I'm proud of you my so, I'm no longer your son, my father died the day he abandoned me and so was my mother. Both Minato and Kashina flinched at what they heard and felt their heart stabbed by thousands of knives. They couldn't believe their ignorance to their eldest child lead him to tell them his parents were dead. Why won't you give a second chance, Naru-chan? asked a crying Kashina to Naruto. Second chance. What about those years that I begged you to train me or at least send a clone to teach me the basic? What about those days that I watched you both celebrating the saviors of Konoha's birthday while forgetting my existence? What about those nights that I spent at hospital because the injuries that I receives from your subordinates? You ask me to give you second chance while ignoring those years of suffering and pain that caused by you both. Screamed Naruto in anger to his parents. Pathetic. In my eyes, you both are pathetic, failure and awful parents. Back to the business, what do you want? The crying Minato wiped away his tears and said, Where did you learn the blue flash style? I'm not going to tell you. Tell me. I'm ordering you to tell me as a Hokage, screamed Minato to Naruto who only smirked and opened the door. Why don't you just ask the Naidam? Naruto then left the office and together with Tobarama, 
heading towards the Senju's house. Few weeks later at the training ground 12, both Satsuki and Yukumo could be seen fighting against Naruto while Obito witnessing their battle at the sideline. Obito watched Naruto blocked Satsuki's kick while grabbed Yukumo's ankle and twisted it slightly before threw them away. Yukumo quickly recovered and threw shurikens which Naruto avoided it before noticed that Satsuki slipped right behind him and spat a stream of fire at him. Quickly, Naruto jumped to the air and performed cage bunch and shuriken jutsu at the two of them. Dodging the shurikens, Satsuki released a blazing orb at Naruto who cut it in half with one of his royal arms, sword of the mystic before knocked the Uchiha away with a kick to her stomach. Quickly, Naruto threw the royal arm to the nearby tree and disappeared before reappeared at the tree and pulled out the sword as it faded into thin air. Sweden. Tepodama. Summoning shield of the just, Naruto blocked the attack and threw a kanai at Yukumo's feet, causing him to teleport to her front and trapped her in a genjutsu, kokwangyo no jutsu, bringer of darkness, and knocked her out with a chop to her. A lot of interesting things happened these past few weeks. The first one is that Naruto left his family and lives with Tobarama as soon as he get to Minato's home and packed up his belongings and moved to the retired cage's house. It took his family few days to notice that he's not living with them. Kushina reacted by crying and begging him to live with her as she regretted for what she did to him which he found it as a pathetic. Minato even promised to teach him his personal jutsu including Rasengan and Hiraishin which the former mastered it after witnessing Minato try to combine it with his futon chakra while Jiraiya and Kakashi looking at it. As for Hiraishin, he's learning the basic from Tobarama. His siblings have different reaction with Menma glad that he didn't live with them, Mito sad at his brother's choice and Natsumi crying and clinging at him. Even the legendary Sanin try to persuade Naruto to live with them back which he ignored them. Second. Yukumo and Satsuki are trying to befriend with him. They stopped treating him badly or call him dead last and even asked him to have lunch together every day which he rejected, stating he has no time and opted to train instead. Naruto knew that both Satsuki and Yukumo regret what they did to him but the blonde will not going to forgive them easily. He clearly told them that, we are just a team and comrades not friends. Friends and comrades are two different thing. Third and last, regarding the royal arms. Naruto found out from Tobarama that he's not only the final king of the legendary clan, Luces, but also one of the chosen children of the prophecy. Flashback, Gigi. Can I ask you something? Tobarama who sitting before Naruto while reading a book, nodded his head and closed his book, placing it on the coffee table that separated the two of them. Have you ever met any kings of Luces? I did. Both Hashirama and I. We first met the 112th king of Luces, Morse Luces Kylam when we were young. He saved Hashirama and I from an ambush that set by several Uchiha. At his request, we sometimes help Morse to fight against people who threatening his kingdom. Then Morse passed away and we met his son, Regis, the 113th king of Luces. We fought alongside him few times before Hashirama, Madara and several other clans came together cease to fight against each other. The last time we met Regis before his death was when Hashirama married to Mito, Regis and his friends came to Konoha and we were shocked because he looks older than his age. What happened after that? One day, we received news from his son, Noctis, that Regis passed away which made us completely sad. We paid a visit to his grave and sometimes helped Noctis to fight against demons that threatening him as he traveling across the world to search for the tombs of his ancestors to collect the royal arms. On a fateful night, we received a distress signal from Kingdom of Luces, Hashirama and I quickly went there and shocked when the kingdom was destroyed while Noctis fighting against a man. Hashirama went to the secret room to rescue Noctis' wife, Lunafreya Nox Florette while I assist Noctis to fight against the mysterious man. When Hashirama returned with Lunafreya, Noctis ordered us to return to Konoha and take care of Lunafreya before he sacrificed himself to seal the mysterious man. Who's this mysterious man? Asked Naruto to Tobarama. His name is Arden Izunia, a chancellor from one of ancient kingdom, Niflheim. He is known as Adagium by the kings of Luces. Now Naruto, I want to know why you suddenly ask me about this? Naruto rose up from his seat and extended his left arm, resulting 14 crystalline transparent blue weapons to appear encircling him with glimmering crystals surrounding him. Tobarama who saw those weapons nearly had a heart attack as he couldn't believe what he's seeing currently. Royal arms. But how? I had a dream. It's about someone that I never met yet felt has a connection. And I witnessed it through that person's memories from his birth to his death. 
His name is Shiranui Yorichi and famously known as the Founder King. At first I just ignored it by every night, it getting worse. After Yorichi San's memories, it was his brother's turn, Somnus, and he decided to change his clan name from Shiranui to Lucis Kylum after he lost his brothers, and from Somnus to his descendants until where they are known as Kings of Lucis. Those memories most of them are about the true king and the chosen children as well as prophecy. Then, Naruto closed his sapphirine blue eyes and took a deep breath before exhaled. I saw myself in those memories. Sometimes I saw my face inside a giant crystal which the kings of Lucis will speak to someone by the crystal. I tried my best to deny that the face inside the crystal and the person that I saw in those memories was me but every time I deny, the memories will give me more clues that the person I saw it was no other than me. What clue? Asked Tobarama to Naruto. My full name, the first person that become me true friend, you, and the people who abandoned and hurt me. Replied Naruto with a sad face as he sat down with the royal arms disappeared into thin air. And since I still have doubt about that, a mysterious voice told me to summon the glaives which I did and it appeared. Gigi. Why the gods are so cruel? They made my family left me for the sake of my siblings because of a prophecy, they made the villagers despised me because they think me as a demon, they took my only friend who died because of someone and now. After years of suffering and getting hurt, now the gods who took everything from me, try to fix back by making me as the true king to save the world. Naruto. Listen to me son. Said Tobarama with a soft tone to the stunned Naruto. Now you believed yourself as the true king and undoubtedly one of the chosen children. That means, the fate of everyone in the whole world is in your hands and you're the one who's going to decide their fate. But why me? Why not other people are the saviors of Konoha? Why me? What's so special about me? Screamed Naruto in disbelief. Because Naruto. You are a special person. When I saw you near the lake for the first time, I saw anger, vengeance, hatred and sadness in your eyes but when I look more deeper, I saw hope. A hope to make everyone acknowledge of your existence. A hope to prove what they think about you are wrong. And a hope to make everyone respect you not because of who you are but what you are, a good man. And because of that hope, I took you as my apprentice. Passing my knowledge to you while teaching you to forget the past and slowly forgive them. And when the boy that stood before me is not just a special person but also the true king and one of the chosen children, I felt happy and proud that I chose you. Don't let anyone control your life or decide who you are or decide which path you should take because only you can decide what you want to do and which path you're going to choose. You are you. Remember this okay? Gigi, you have so much faith in me. What if instead of a savior, I am a destroyer? Tobarama only smiled and said, No you won't because I believe in you. Flashback and Tobarama explained to Naruto that he is Lucis Kylum from his father's side whose grandfather is Noctis while the grandmother is Luna who at that time was pregnant which she nor Noctis aware about it. The Senju also explained that Naruto's grandfather and Minato unable to summon royal arms or show any abilities that a Lucis Kylum has for unknown reasons. He even explained that the ring of the Lucy, which Noctis gave to him to pass to the true king prior to his death, was given by the Almighty God to Yorichi before he passed it to Somnus and his descendants, rejected Minato and his grandfather as the true king. As for the ring, Naruto wore it for a while and surprised when it shone brightly. He then gave back the ring to Tobarama, telling the cage that he not ready yet to wear it which Tobarama understood and kept it. Currently, Naruto is leaning against the tree behind him with his arms crossed his chest while waiting for Yukumo to regain her consciousness which she did and wondered what happened. Satsuki then explained to her as Naruto came to her side while Obito came out from the tree and praised their skill especially Naruto. So Naruto, mind tell us how you can summon those weapons? Asked Obito to Naruto. Not gonna tell you, it's a secret, replied Naruto. But we are comrades right? We shouldn't keep secrets to each other, said Satsuki to Naruto. Some secrets are best to keep it as it will not only cost the relationship but also life. But Naruto, no, I'm not going to tell you both. Said Naruto before looked away to ignore the sad faces of his teammates. So Sensei, what now? Well, since Minato Sensei doesn't allow us to take any mission for two weeks, I think let's just keep training and spending time with each other. I heard the Chunin exam will be held at the end of the month at here. Everyone widened their eyes and excited to join the Chunin exam especially Naruto who's going to show to everyone how powerful he is. Judging by your reaction, you guys want to enter it but I gotta ask you all first. 
said Obito as he gave a serious look. You should know by joining Chunin exam, you're allowed to kill or do anything to your opponent as long as you can win. You might getting injuries or the worst of all die during exam and you still going to join it. I. I'm going to join to prove to everyone that I'm really strong. Strong enough to beat Itachi, said Satsuki as she pumped up her fist and smirked. I'm going to show to them that I'll be the next and most powerful Genjutsu mistress, Yakumo said in happy tone and gave a wink. To show everyone how wrong they are for believing me as a dead last especially them. Obito smirked and said, I believe the next legendary Sanin will be the three of you. Well then, let's go to Yakaniku Q, my treat. The genin nodded their head and cheered when they heard Obito's going to treat them while Naruto thinking about the possible events that gonna happen during the Chunin exam. Naruto then stopped walking and quickly turned around which made his teammates to surprise at his sudden change of attitude. What's wrong Naruto? Asked Yakumo. Nothing. Let's go eat while discussing about the Chunin exam. Unknown to everyone especially Team 12, a tall man with red-violet hair and amber eyes could be seen standing on top of a building, stalking Naruto with a smile on his face. So that's the true king huh? We will meet soon Naruto. After taking their seats and order their food to a waitress, Naruto decided to ask Obito about the Chunin exams. Sensei, how hard is the Chunin exams? Asked Naruto to Obito. Well, it's not really hard as long as you have teamwork. I can't really tell you about it because every year, the structure and evaluation processes differ from one exam to the next so that Genin cannot come prepared. Said Obito to Naruto. But as long as you have teamwork, you all can defeat your opponent without any trouble. So Sensei, when will the Chunin exams begin? Asked Yakumo as she drank her tea. It was supposed to be next week but since there are several villages want to participate other than Suna, Minato Sensei decided the exam will be held next month. The villages were Kiri, Kumo, Iwa, Yami, Hoshi, Aim, Taki, Kusa and Otto. Yami and Hoshi. Never heard that. Said Naruto to Obito who only chuckled. They must be strong right Sensei. Indeed, the current Yumikage became Cage when she was 14. As for Hoshi, not really much known about the village. Said Obito before the waiter of the restaurant arrived with their foods. All right, let's eat everyone. Itadakimas. Sensei, since we still have time before the Chunin exam begin, why don't we train every day at 7 morning? Asked Yakumo to Obito. That's a great idea. Satsuki chan, Naruto, are you agree with Yakumo chan's idea? Asked Obito to both Naruto and Satsuki. Sure, we might even create some new jutsus, replied Satsuki happily. Whatever, said Naruto without any emotion as he continued eating his food. The next morning Naruto arrived at the training ground 12 and saw Obito, Satsuki and Yakumo waiting for him. Good morning everyone. From now on until a day before the Chunin exams, we will meet it here at 7 to train for the next 5 hours. Said Obito to everyone who nodded their head. Today, I'm going to improve all of your skills and create a cooperation ninjutsu. Cooperation ninjutsu? What's that sensei? Asked Yakumo to Obito but Satsuki gave the answer to her. Cooperation ninjutsu is the combination of two or more ejutsu to create a new jutsu with a strength greater than the sum of its components. This strength can be measured in terms of the new jutsu's range or destructive power. That's right Satsuki but to create a cooperation ninjutsu is extremely difficult, said Obito to the Uchiha. Now, I want to improve each of your skills. Naruto about that dance. Hinokami Kagura. Ah yes, Hinokami Kagura. Do you have any different element other than fire? Naruto shook his head, no but maybe you can help me with something. I didn't even use them because they reminds me of him. Obito quite surprised to hear Naruto haven't used Sharingan and nodded his head while Satsuki and Yukumo looked at Naruto with a confused face. Seeing their sensei staring at Naruto with a serious face made them cast it aside the thoughts of asking what is that something and who is him. All right then. We'll meet at there at 4 p.m. and train until an hour before dinner. Try to improve your Irionin jutsu. Said Obito to Naruto who nodded his head and looked at the sky. Satsuki, what about you? Have you awakened your Sharingan? Satsuki shook her head in disappointment, I haven't sensei. Don't feel bad. You will awake your Sharingan, trust me, said Obito with a happy tone as he gave Satsuki a thumbs up that made Satsuki smile. Once you awake your Sharingan, I will teach you about it. 
As far as I know, your affinity is fire and you have a lot of Katen Jutsus, right? What about your second affinity? Second affinity? Obito took out three pieces of chakra paper and gave to the three of them. Naruto channeled his chakra into the paper which caused it to split into five pieces with the strongest as fire and the weakest as earth. Amazing. That's cool. Naruto nodded his head and explained, I have five basic elements but each of them are unique unlike other shinobi. Even Tobarama Gigi was shocked when he saw my affinities. Satsuki then took a deep breath and channeled her chakra into the paper. It then split into two pieces, one became ashes while another one wrinkled. Fire and lightning. Wow, that's cool. I'll ask Kakashi to teach you few Raiden Jutsu since he owed me something and try to learn the eternal flame Kenjutsu style from your mother. Said Obito proudly to Satsuki. Your turn future Genjutsu mistress. Yukumo infused her chakra into the paper and it split into two. One shows as water as her main affinity while another one is fire. That's cool Yukumo. I will teach you several Katen Jutsu but if you wish to learn more powerful type, Naruto can help you. Right. Said Naruto which made Yukumo surprised. Yukumo, try to learn several poison type Jutsu from Shizune. Very well then, let's begin with our first cooperation in Jutsu, the Tenna Kan, Flame Emperor, said Obito to his excited Genin. Several hours later, Satsuki, Yukumo. Get ready, said Naruto to his teammates who nodded their head. Now. Naruto ran towards Obito and delivered several punches and kicks with the final one sent him to the air. Satsuki then dashed towards her sensei and performed a somersault that resulted her heel to connect to Obito's forehead, sending him to the ground. Yukumo then appeared behind Obito and delivered a powerful punch to the Uchiha's abdomen before flipped away. Let's do it. Satsuki. Yukumo. Katen. Goka Mekyaku. Katen. Gokaku no Jutsu. Katen. Karu Enden. Obito watched in horror as the blazing sea of flames engulfed him completely before he could do anything. Good job. That attack is seriously powerful. Said Obito who came out from the trees after watching his team defeated his clone with their first cooperation ninjutsu. And also can kill a janin if they are serious. Obito then stared at the condition of his genin. Naruto didn't show any sign of tired. Satsuki is panting heavily and fell to her knees and Yukumo is struggling to stand up properly and catching her breath. Huff. Huff. Why you didn't show any sign of tired? Asked Satsuki to Naruto. I'm an Uzumaki and also I've been increasing my stamina for many years. Said Naruto without any emotion before he stared at Obito's scarred face. Anyway, can you tell us how you received those scars? Ah these scars eh? Obito touched the right side of his face and took his flak jacket and his shirt to reveal his muscular body with scars for the entire right side, mysteriously there are some area of his right side body have a white color. Sitting down to face his genin, Obito then said, it was many years ago, I was placed on a team with Kakashi and Rin under the leadership of Yandaimi Hokage. During the Third Shinobi World War, our team was tasked to destroy the Kanabi Bridge because it was a vital pathway to Iwagaker's line of supply. Minato Sensei was soon called to the front lines, leaving Kakashi who was promoted to Jonin to lead the team. Then, Rin was captured by Tuiwa Nin. Kakashi elected to abandon Rin to continue the mission while I refused to abandon my comrade. So we both split up but not before telling him that those who break the rules are trash, but those who abandon their comrades are worse than trash. After that, I located a cave that those Iwa Nin were using as a hideout. Before I could rescue Rin, one of them managed to sneak behind me and was about to kill me but Kakashi arrived just in time and protected me at the cost of his left eye. I then awakened my Sharingan and killed the enemy. Both of us then went to the cave and rescued Rin by the Iwa Nin that captured Rin, used a jutsu that caused the cave to collapse around us. We then ran for the exit but Kakashi was struck in his blind spot and fell. So, I grabbed Kakashi and threw him away before trapped by a falling boulder. Then how do you escape Sensei? Asked Satsuki to Obito. Well, after giving my Sharingan to Kakashi as a gift for becoming a Janin, I thought I was going to die when Iwa reinforcements arrived and further compressed the ruble, but when I woke up, I met someone who everyone thought him to be dead. Uchiha Madara. Whispered Naruto, which made Satsuki and Yukumo stared at him while Obito nodded his head. How is he still alive is completely strange to me, but he is the one who found my body and fixed what he could. I spent several months at there until one day, 
Madara's minion told me Rin and Kakashi were about to kill by Karigakur Shinobi. I quickly rushed to the location and horrified when I saw Kakashi plunging his Chidori through Rin's heart. Her death caused my Sharingan and Kakashi's Sharingan to evolve to Mangyako Sharingan which resulted Kakashi to pass out while I brutally slaughtering the Mist Shinobi. I hugged Rin's corpse and went back to Madara. He then explained the Eye of the Moon plan which I can't explain to the three of you because it is sulfur monosulfide rank secret but what I can tell all of you is that. It is a beautiful lie. Said Obito to his genin. After that, Madara imparted all of his knowledge and plans to me, entrusting me with his possessions and manifested his own will to act as a guide. Days later, I met Uchiha Izumi who offered to help me because she want to do the same thing since she's the granddaughter of Madara. The three of us traveled across the world while concealing our identities. One day, I went to a megacure and met four orphans with one of them reminded me Rin. They told me about their life, their parents that were killed by rogue shinobi, and their hope to create a better world for everyone where there is no more bloodshed and violence. The orphan that reminded me Rin told me to never give up on my dream and accept the painful truths of reality while keep moving forward as there. I then realized that I've been making Rin sad for what I have done and I immediately rushed to Konoha. But Izumi found out about that and we fought. She nearly killed me and tried to wipe my memory with a seal that Madara placed inside my heart when he rescued me but luckily at that time, Jiraiya who was on his way back to Konoha after traveling across the world, saw Izumi and rescued me. Then, Tsunade treated and checked my whole body while Jiraiya, Orochimaru and Minato Sensei removed the rest of seals that Madara had placed inside me and the rest is history. When Obito finished his story, he giggled at the sight of his genin, a sad yet angry Naruto, a crying Satsuki and a sobbing Yakumo. But Sensei, I've never seen you before. Where are you? asked Naruto to the elder Uchiha. Oh, I became an Anbu and worked as a liaison between Konoha and Yami to build up trust before we made an alliance with them because Minato Sensei believed that Suna want to end our alliance for unknown reasons, replied Obito to Naruto. Sensei, can you tell us about Yami? asked Satsuki to the Uchiha. It's a really good village lead by their Yumikage. Did you know, their Yumikage became a cage when she was 15 years old and that was 5 years ago. And also, she was very kind even though she rarely show her emotion and kinnoff sadistic and merciless. How strong is she? Asked Yakumo as she raised her hand. She's really powerful, in fact, she is stronger than Minato Sensei and the only cage that could beat her is our Nidem, said Obito to Yakumo. She has a dojutsu that allow her to see future, Kamigan, God Eye. She also mastered five basic elements and has a Kekai Jenke, Koton, Steel Style, well enough for that. Let's perfecting the Tenna Kan, Flame Emperor, so that the result will be far more destructive than that. Obito pointed his finger at the massive crater that has boiling magma, which made his three genin chuckled. Time skip. A day before Chunin exams location, training ground 12. You gotta be more faster, Naruto. Obito effortlessly avoiding Naruto's punches and kicks before struck Tobarama's apprentice in the stomach with his knee. Obito then punched him onto the ground and kicked him away as Satsuki and Yakumo arrived at the scene with Obito's clone. Holy shit, Naruto looks terrible, said Yakumo to Satsuki. Yeah and on top of that, Obito sensei looks like beating him instead of teaching him, said Satsuki as she watched Obito brutally beating Naruto who couldn't protect himself. Come on Naruto, how are you going to prove to everyone that you're not what they think of you? screamed Obito in frustration as he picked up Naruto by his hair and threw him to the nearby tree. Katen. Bakufu Ranbu. Obito expelled a blazing spiral at Naruto but he accidentally poured too much of chakra which could kill Naruto. As the flaming vortex getting closer, Naruto's Sharingan became Mangyako Sharingan and immediately swapped place with Obito's clone, saving himself from the powerful technique. His Mangyako Sharingan allows him to swap places with him. That's amazing thought Obito before he appeared beside Naruto and caught the exhausted genin before he could fall. Looks like we did it sensei. My right eye allows me to shift myself between spaces, said Naruto as he panting heavily, Aminate Hikara. Nice name for a powerful space-time ninjutsu, said Obito happily to Naruto. Naruto only chuckled and gazed at Obito with a smirk and allowed Satsuki and Yukumo to look at his Mangyako Sharingan that took the form of four-point pinwheel, much to their shock. He then immediately passed out before Satsuki could ask him about his Sharingan. Location. 
Tobarama's house. Tobarama came out from Naruto's room and went to the living room. The elder Senju sat on the sofa to face the nervous Obito, Satsuki and Yukumo and said. I'm pretty sure you both want to know why Naruto have Sharingan despite not being an Uchiha right? Satsuki and Yakumo nodded their head before glared at Obito. Do not blame your sensei. Shisui and I requested Obito to keep it secret from anyone. But why? Asked Satsuki with a sad tone. Why will he keep it secret? Because child, he doesn't trust anyone other than Shisui, Obito and I about his eyes. Why? One of his eyes was given to Shisui on his birthday as a replacement. Replacement? Hokage-sama, you mean he lost his eye before? Asked Yakumo, which she received a nod from Tobarama. How? He was on his way to Minato's house and suddenly a drunk Chunin attacked him, destroying his right eye with a kanai. Luckily, I followed him from behind to ensure something bad won't happen to him, said Tobarama with a hint of anger tone as he clenched his fist. He then casted a genjutsu to hide his eye from everyone. Naidem sama, it still doesn't explain why he has another Sharingan, said Satsuki to Tobarama. This time, Obito replied her question, what we are going to tell you is a sulfur monosulfide rank secret and you know what will happen if you spill it out right. They nodded their head furiously at Obito. Before Shisui died, he found out Namikaze clan is the cousin to Uchiha clan. How he found out is still a mystery to us but according to the letter that he sent to me, the chance for a Namikaze to awaken their Sharingan is extremely low. Naruto is possibly the only Namikaze who awakened the Sharingan. Yes. Your sensei is right. I remembered the rumor of an Uchiha married to a Namikaze, resulting the entire Uchiha clan to furious and disowned the Uchiha. It is truly a fool decision, said Tobarama to everyone. A fool decision? Tobarama sama, is it related to Naruto's phantom weapons? I suspected he is related to Kagami Mizuki somehow, or he might be the heir of Lusa's Kylum, said Obito to Tobarama, which made the retired cage to place a soundproof seal. Indeed, you were right but I am not sure about he is related to Yumikaj. As far as I know, Yumigakure is the country that created by the survivors of Kingdom of Lucis to honor their kings and queens that sacrificed their lives to protect the kingdom. Said Tobarama as he placed his finger on his chin. I too heard the rumor of the current Yumikaj able to summon royal arms like the House of Kylum but that's impossible since all of them were dead and the only one that can summon the power of kings is no other than Naruto unless. Mizuki is somehow related to Lunafreya Nox Florette's family. She too capable of summoning her clan version of royal arms. Obito. How did you know Naruto is the heir of Lusa's Kylum? Asked Tobarama to Obito. I'm sorry to interrupt but Lusa's Kylum? Never heard of that, said Satsuki. It is not really surprise that no one knows or hear about Lusa's Kylum. My father's ancestor was a good friend to one of the kings of Lusa's. My father told me that the Lucis Kylum clan is the most powerful clan due to their Kekai Jenke and they use magic which is similar to ninjutsu albeit without chakra, said Yukumo to Satsuki. Well to answer your question Tobarama-sama, I saw Mizuki-sama summoned phantom weapons from thin air like Naruto. The only thing that different is their color and weapons type. Mizuki-sama's version of royal arms are golden color with golden rune and weapons that have star ornament attached to the hilt said Obito to Tobarama. When I saw him summoning royal arms, I immediately remembered about the story of the founder king, after blessed by the gods with the power of light, sealed the greatest calamity at the cost of his life and I believed that Naruto is the descendant of the founder king. That is right Obito. Naruto is in fact the descendant of the founder king, the true king and one of the chosen children. What the bloody hell are you talking about old man? Everyone turned around to see a half Naruto which made Satsuki and Yakumo to blush at the muscular scarred body. Hey Naruto, wanna eat ramen? Asked Obito to Naruto, my treat. Sure after you explain to me why the bloody hell you told them about my Sharingan, said Naruto in anger as he narrowed his eyes at Satsuki and Yakumo. I told them because they deserve to know and besides they saw your Sharingan, said Tobarama to Naruto as he rose up from his seat and calmed him down. They need to know because they regret what they have done to you before. Whatever old man. I want to take some fresh air. Said Naruto emotionlessly to Tobarama as he went to his room to wear a shirt and left the house. Sensei should we- Obito stopped Satsuki and shook his head, but. Let him be alone. Said the elder Uchiha to Satsuki who released a sigh. 
An angry Naruto could be seen walking to an unknown destination while ignoring the villagers that whispering and staring at him. The apprentice of Naidam unable to believe that Tobarama told Satsuki and Yakumo about his secrets. They shunned me, hate me, called me dead last and willing to ditch me to pass the bell test and now they expect me to forgive them for what they did to me before, thought Naruto angrily as he clenched his fist tightly. Suddenly, he smelt something that he hasn't eaten for a long time. Maybe having bowls of ramen will calm me down. Entering the Ichiraku ramen, Naruto took the nearby seat and smiled when Tuchi saw his favorite customer came to his shop. Hey old man. Naruto. It's been a while since you came here to eat my delicious ramen. Said Tuchi happily to the blonde that chuckled at him. Yeah, I want the usual ramen. Said Naruto to Tuchi before receive a nod from the old man and watched the owner disappeared into the kitchen. Five minutes later, Tuchi came back with a bowl of miso ramen. Thanks a lot and this time I'm going to pay. Ha ha ha. I was about to say I'm going to treat you. Anyway, how's your first mission? Asked Tuchi to Naruto as he grabbed a chair and sat in front of him, watching Naruto eat the ramen slowly. Not bad. Had to save a princess who became daimyo. And a rank mission if you ask me. Before my team could return to Konoha, Minato asked my team to support Kashina's team because they engaged Zabuza and his allies. Another a rank mission for me said Naruto to Tucci before he continued eating his ramen. Where's Ayame Ne? Oh, she's dating with her boyfriend, Itachi. Said Tucci proudly to Naruto which made the blonde genin gave Tucci a WTF face. Ha ha ha, I know, I know. I am quite shocked too but oh well, as long as she happy, I'm fine with that. What about you? I'm not interested with this relationship stuff. Maybe not now. Anyway, another bowl of ramen please. Tucci nodded his head and disappeared into the kitchen to make another bowl of ramen. As Naruto patiently waiting for his ramen, a red-violet-haired man with strange choice of outfit entered the shop and sat beside him. Hum. Um excuse me sir. Naruto looked at the middle-aged man and gave a warm smile to him. Will you please recommend me the first ramen that I should try because this is my first time eating ramen. Oh sure and please don't call me sir. Said Naruto to the man that made him chuckle. Naruto took the menu and showed the pick of a ramen to him. If you are someone who love to eat spicy type, I recommend you to eat this, curry chicken ramen or chicken katsu ramen. If you prefer non-spicy, that will be chicken chashu ramen. For me, I will personally recommend you to try chicken teriyaki ramen. Tuchi came and gave Naruto's ramen before noticed another customer that made him smile. Welcome to Ichiraku ramen, may I know your order? A bowl of chicken teriyaki ramen please said the customer to Tucci with a smile. You're not from here aren't you? Asked Naruto to the man which he replied by shaking his head. I am a traveler from a far land. Judging by your scarred arms, you're a shinobi aren't you? Naruto nodded his head at the traveler before continued eating his ramen until it is almost finished. Tell me, why you become a shinobi? Naruto looked at the traveler and smiled sadly, I want everyone to acknowledge my existence. I want to prove to everyone that I am not what they think I am. What is your dream? Everyone must have a dream right? Asked Naruto to the traveler. I've been traveling for so many years until I forget what is my dream. Perhaps. Perhaps to gain the eternal peace that I seek for so long. Said the traveler to Naruto with a sad face. Luckily, the sad atmosphere was cut off by Tucci who came with the traveler's food. Both of them spent half an hour eating while talking about the journey of their life especially the traveler. What makes Naruto fascinating is that the traveler knows a lot ot things about the ancient history such as kingdom of Luces and the battle between the founder king and the greatest calamity. After paying the food including the travelers much to his dismay since he wants to treat Naruto, they both parted ways but not before exchanging their name. My name is Naruto. Arden. Arden Izunia. Arden wished him good luck for his future and left the stunning and confused genin that kept looking at Arden until the middle-aged man disappeared from his sight. Naruto snapped to the reality when Konohamaru poked his waist. Hey, Konohamaru? What's wrong? Asked Naruto as he knelt before the grandson of Sandame and gave him candies. Where's Moegi and Udon? We're playing hide and seek, said Konohamaru as he ate one of the candies. Nay Naru ni, it's been a while since you play with me. Come and play with me pleasey. Naruto ruffled Konohamaru's hair and said, I'm sorry Kono but I can't play with you right now. 
I'm having a bad day today and also I need to prepare for tomorrow, the Chunin exams. Once the Chunin exams finish, I promise you we play hide and seek. Yay. All right Naru ni. Gotta hide now before they found us. Konohamaru then ran away to an alley as Moegi and Udon arrived. Ah Moegi, Udon. Nice to meet you. Looking for Konohamaru. He went to that alley, said Naruto to the children. Thanks Naruto ni, said Moegi to Naruto. Thank you Naruto ni, can we have some candies? Asked Udon with a smile to Naruto. Sure. Naruto gave candies to the academy student and watched them ran to the alley. He was about to turn around but he heard a faint scream of Konohamaru that made him rush towards the alley. When he arrived at the alley, he saw something that made his blood boil. He saw a guy with purple makeup and wearing catsuit lifting Konohamaru to the air by his shirt. Immediately, Naruto entered Senko Modo and freed Konohamaru. What the Konohamaru are you okay? Asked Naruto to Konohamaru. What happened? He bumped into me while I'm running. I already tried to avoid him but he purposely let me bump into me and demand a sorry from me. Said Konohamaru to Naruto before he received a hug from the letter. It's fine. Naruto rose up and glared at the clown guy with so much hatred that made him and the girl that standing beside him flinched. You're in Konoha for Chunin exams so watch your attitude to the villagers of Konoha because you might punch someone that is related to Sandame like this kid. Konkuro, I've told you to let the kid go, said the blonde female Suna Genin to the clown guy wearing makeup. What if Gara saw what did you do to the brat? Relax Tamari, he won't be here to scold me said Konkuro as he glared at Naruto and prepared to fight him with something that wrapped in bandages that strapped onto his back. You sure this Gara won't be here to scold you? Asked Naruto to Konkuro before he looked at the tree. Come out, there's no need for you to hide from me. Immediately, a red-haired genin with eye tattoo on his forehead appeared before Naruto, much to Konkuro's horror. Konkuro, you disgrace me, said Gara coldly to Konkuro. The tone that he used to Konkuro made him afraid and looked at the ground. I'm sorry for that. My name is Gara and we are here to participate Chunin exams. What's your name? Naruto. Gara gave Naruto a sadistic smile and said, Naruto. Mother is going to enjoy drinking your blood. Tamari, Konkuro, let's go to our hotel to get some rest. Naruto watched the three of them went to the hotel and decided to pay a visit to Shisui's grave unaware that two person are looking at him from a far distance. So that's the true king huh? Asked a tall woman with long soft black hair, dark eyes with a mole under her left eye and dark red to Arden. Indeed. He may be physically weak but his willpower is really powerful. Reminds me of Somnus and Yorichi. Said Arden to the mysterious woman in dark cloak. What are you going to do, Izumi? What I've told Shisui before. Azumi's onyx eyes became a pair of Manyako Sharingan that took the form of curved three snowflakes. Burn Konoha to the ashes. This is it. This is the day that Team 12 have been waiting for. The day where they going to prove how powerful they are especially Naruto. This is also the day where they might be promoted into a chunin. Currently, Team 12 are witnessing a genin with two Chinese style buns on her head with short fringe bangs framing her face screaming at two chunin that blocking the room. They also saw Team 7 and Team 11 arguing with the two Chunin. Satsuki facepalm at the number of the room which is fake while Yakumo giggled at the two Chunin as she knew they are in fact Kotetsu and Izumo. A simple trick that made a team fell for it. What a fool. Said Naruto before he went to the upstairs but suddenly the disguised Kotetsu charged towards Naruto and delivered a kick that he blocked without looking at it, shocking everyone completely. Kotetsu-san. Looks like we have interesting candidates this year eh? Said Kotetsu before he dropped his disguise which Izumo did the same thing. That's right Kotetsu and you're planning to become a chunin, Naruto? Asked Izumo to Naruto. Yeah because I'm not going to be the village gate guard for the rest of my life like both of you too. Said Naruto before he went to the real room with his team, leaving both Kotetsu and Izumo hugging each other while crying anime. When Naruto entered the room, he and his team were greeted with a combination of killer intent from every genin that came from different countries. Satsuki and Yakumo were terrified with the killer intent and grabbed Naruto's arms, much to his dismay. He replied back with his own killer intent that made them all tremble before he took his seat. Soon, Team 10 entered the room and chatting with each others. Satsuki and Yakumo were discussing with Ino about the exam and the opponents that they are going to face while Naruto, 
Shikamaru and Choji agreed that the exam is troublesome. Five minutes later Team 7, 8 and Team 11 entered the room and saw both teams were talking to each other. So the whole gang is here eh? Asked Kiba to everyone with Akamaru barked at the whole gang. Menma, Sasuke, already prepare to get your ass kicked by me? Peefed, in your dreams Kiba. Replied Menma as he rolled his eyes at Kiba. I've been waiting for this moment you know. I will defeat you Kiba by becoming the Chunin. Oh I don't think so Menma. It will be me who become the Chunin. I will show both of you the power of an elite. Said Sasuke as he revealed his Sharingan that made Satsuki chuckled. Are you sure about that Les? Asked Sai that made Sasuke growled and glared at him. Those pink eyes are cute you know? Can I have one? As for the girls, they were discussing about their male teammates and their first C rank missions. Our first C rank mission became an A rank after we found out that our client is the daughter of a late daimyo. Said Satsuki to Mito, Natsumi, Hanada, Sakura and Ino. Yeah and we literally saved a princess from a tyrant like the fairy tale. Well not we but Naruto. Said Yukumo as she recalled the memory of Koyuki ing Naruto, much to her dismay. What about all of you? We knew already about Mito and Natsumi so we are not really surprised because our team acted as a backup for them. Backup. I'm pretty sure your first C rank mission is more difficult than any of us. Said Ino as she crossed her arms. My team first C rank mission is quite easy. Just delivering a scroll to the fire temple. What about you, Sakura? Oh. Delivery like Ino but it was at Sanagakure instead. What about you, Hanada? Sakura looked at Hanada who's been stalking someone since she arrived with her team. Stalking your crush? Our team need to eliminate a group of bandits and no Sakura, not him but another one. Said Hanada before she peeked at the silent Naruto and blushed. She stopped having a massive crush at Menma for unknown reasons and began to interest with Naruto who once saved him and Satsuki, which the Uchiha didn't remember unlike Hanada. From Akumo Nin when they were five. Her once shy attitude had completely changed to a cold heart person. For Naruto, he was having a great time discussing with Shikamaru, Shino, and Choji about the exam and their future opponents until an Iwa Nin slammed her fist to Naruto's table, drawing everyone's attention. She has short black hair and dark eyes. She wears the standard attire of the Iwa Nin, consisting of a red uniform with her right sleeve missing and a lapel over her right leg, fishnet tights, and a skirt over them. She also wears regular shinobi sandals and a pair of gloves. You are that Namikaze bastard's son aren't you? Asked the Iwa Nin to Naruto who nodded his head without even bother looking at her. My name is Kuritsuchi and watch yourself during the exam because I'm gonna kill you. Kuritsuchi released her killer intent that made the Konoha Nin trembled especially Natsumi. She smirked when she saw Naruto's siblings are afraid of her and walked towards the one that she presumed as the youngest of the siblings. You are afraid aren't you? I thought Namikaze's children are brave but turns out they were cowards especially you. Said Kuritsuchi to Natsumi before delivered a punch at her face but Naruto stopped it by grabbing her fist and twisted it, resulting her to scream in pain. Let me go, you bastard. Naruto looked at Natsumi who's crying and hugged his free arm tightly. He then looked back at Kuritsuchi and tightened his grip on her fist and released his killer intent directly at Kuritsuchi resulting the granddaughter O.T. Sandane to see a vision of a yellow-haired demon brutally slaughtering Iwa Nin. He knew that his relationship between his siblings are not good enough but he won't tolerate someone who tried to hit his siblings. Careful not to lose your arm. I have no regret on ripping someone's arm, said Naruto as he tightened his grip and twisted it very hard until she screamed in agony. Do you understand me? Kuritsuchi nodded her head furiously and went to her team but not before glaring at Naruto which made him chuckled while Shikamaru described her as a troublesome bitch. Suddenly, someone came to them and said. You are too loud. You should watch your behavior because people will try to kill you due to your behavior. They turned around and saw man with onyx eyes and ash gray hair that he tied into a short ponytail. He wears a dark purple shirt with a high collar, a white undershirt, and dark purple pants with a white cloth waistband. He also wears a pair of black rimmed circular glasses, a dark purple shirt with a high collar, a white undershirt, dark purple pants with a white cloth waistband and konoha around his head. Hey, my name is Yukushi Kabuto. I can give you several tips for the Chunin exams since this is my seventh time of participating it. Kiba laughed and arrogantly said, wow, you must be S. Hanada then elbowed his waist very hard and glared at him. S sorry Hanada. Oh no. The exams are difficult. 
said Kabuto before he revealed blank cards to rookie 15. These cards contains the information of your future opponents but I can give you the list of the genin that are really powerful and might be promoted into chunin. Wanna hear about it? The rookie 15 nodded their heads and watched Kabuto channeled his chakra into 11 blank cards. The first card revealed the name of Gara. Then, Rock Lee followed by Kuritsuchi, Hayuga Neji, Ni Yugito, Han, Yuki Haku, Kusanagi Zanjetsu, Hirai Ryujin, Kagami Mirai and Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto. Gara of the Sand and Sun to the Yandaimi Case Cage, Rasa. He able to manipulate sand and hid nature transformations are Doton, Raiden and Futon. Said Kabuto to everyone, unaware that Naruto narrowed his eyes at the genin with malicious aura. Oh and also he completed all his missions without a single scratch. Not even a chunin could do that. After that we have Rock Lee or the Konoha's beautiful green wild beast. He unable to use ninjutsu or genjutsu due to a mysterious genetic disorder but thanks to Mike Guy off Konoha's sublime green beast of prey, Lee became a taijutsu master. Next, Kuritsuchi the granddaughter of Sandame Suchikage. She is capable of using Doton, Katen and Sweden. Oh, she also can use Yotan and extremely powerful at taijutsu. Hayuga Neji, a genius with two deadly abilities that no one has, Byakugan and Gentle Fist. With his Byakugan, Neji can see chakra pathway systems and the 361 Tenketsu. Ni Yugito, the adoptive daughter of Yandaimi Reikage, a, and famously known as Hellcat by Kumo. She capable of using an advanced type of Katen that is twice hotter than a normal version and far more destructive as well as blue. Han the steam warrior of Iwagakure. He can use Katen, Sweden and Futen as well as enhance his attack with his Futen. Not much known about him other than he is Sandame Suchikage's bodyguard even though he is 16. Yuki Haku, the adoptive daughter of Momochi Zabuza, the last Yuki and the apprentice to the new Godam Mizukage. She can use Sweeten, Futon and Hyaten as well as good at creating poisonous gas. Ah, it appears that she once fought against Naruto here. Everyone except Team 12 gasped while Naruto clenched his fist tightly and looked at Shikamaru and Shino with serious eyes that made them flinch and nodded their heads. Agatsuma Zanjetsu from Hoshigakure and known as the Lightning Demon. He is a Kenjutsu master and use one of the ancient Kenjutsu style, Breath of the Thunder style. He can use Raiden, Sweeten and Rantan. Be careful when you fight him because he is extremely fast and powerful genin. Wait. Breath of the Thunder style. Naruto immediately recalled the memory of Yorichi teaching his students the breath of the sun but since they were not as powerful as him, Yorichi taught them an alternate breath styles that evolved into flames, thunder, love, flower, mist, wind, water, insect, serpent and moon. Maybe. Maybe this Zanjetsu guy can help Naruto to learn more about Hinokami Kagura since it is extremely similar to Breath of the Sun. Hirai Ryujin of the Water Mistress from Hoshigakure 2. She is the heiress to Hirai clan and master Kenjutsu, Ninjutsu and Taijutsu. It appears that she mastered all five basic elements and have two sub-elements, Futen and Rantan. She also used one of the ancient Kenjutsu style, Breath of the Water. Kagami Mirai the moon warrior and younger sister to Yandaimi Yamikage, Kagami Mizuki. Like Zanjetsu and Ryujin, she use another ancient Kenjutsu style, Breath of the Moon and Breath of the Wind. She can use Sweden, Katen, Doten and her clan Kekai Jenke, Maiten. Lastly, Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto, the eldest child of Yandaimi Hokage and red hot-blooded habanero and apprentice of Naidem Hokage, Senju Tobarama. He is a deadly swordsman due to the blue flash style and can use five basic elements. Naruto also fought against Zabuza and survived and freed land of snow and land of wave as well as known by these two countries as the great hero. Feeling uncomfortable with everyone looking at him with different reactions, Naruto cleared his throat and asked, Kabuto-san, can you tell me about Otto Nin? Kabuto surprised at Naruto's question and laughed before replied, Otto Nin are weakest Nin in the Chunin exams so you don't need to worry about them. I'm pretty sure you can kick their asses in a second like your father. Yeah you right. They are. Pathetic? Ah oh, yes, pathetic. Immediately, an auto nin that resembles a mummy charged at Naruto and delivered a roundhouse kick that Naruto ducked to avoid it. He then performed Senen Garashi, causing the auto nin comically leapt into the air while everyone laughed at it. All right maggots. Sit down. Everyone sat down at different place and watched the proctor of the first phase of the exam glaring at them hardly while releasing his killer intent. 
My name is Morino Ibiki and I am your proctor for the first phase of Chunin exams. Welcome to hell, said Ibiki as he slammed his fist to the table. For the first phase of the exam, you need to answer 10 questions within an hour while my assistants observing all of you. I will give all of you the final question once 45 minutes had passed. So good luck on answering the questions, you may use whatever abilities you have to answer the questions but do not get yourself caught by me or my assistants because if you do. Ibiki looked at Naruto and gave a sinister smirk to him which he replied with a blank expression. You will get disqualified, you may answer the questions now. Everyone began to answer the questions while some of them were cheating with their own methods. Naruto however decided not to answer a single question on the paper and looked at Ibiki who's glaring at him. He then blinked and smiled when Ibiki widened his eyes. Morse code. Wait. A. A spy. Ibiki replied in Morse code by tapping the table which Naruto translated as WHERE the apprentice of the Nidem then looked at Kabuto before closed his eyes. After 45 minutes had passed, Ibiki looked at everyone and said, the tenth question is simple but if you give the wrong answer, you and your team will be barred from taking the Chunin exams forever. If you decide not to answer it, you can leave the room. What? But this is the first time we take the Chunin exams, screamed Tamari to Ibiki. Too bad because I'm the proctor and I create my own rules, said Ibiki before he crossed his arms and watched one by one leave the room. 279 participants, which means nine teams left the room. Let's see what Shisui's student can do. Ibiki went to Naruto's side and lifted him to the air by the collar of his jacket before released his killer intent to Naruto, causing everyone except for several genin to tremble in fear while his team and family looked at Naruto with a worry face. Naruto only smiled at Ibiki and released his killer intent that made Ibiki gasp and saw a vision of a demon with purple ripples eyes killing everyone. Ibiki-san, your killer intent is very good, if not because of Shisui sensei Naidem and Sandame Hokage's teachings, I probably pass out right now, said Naruto as Ibiki put down Naruto and looked at him with a surprised face. This kid is really good, thought Ibiki before he regained his composure and said, all of you are past the question. Everyone screamed what loudly with some of them looked at Ibiki with a confused face. The head interrogation torture Konoha's department grinned and explained. The tenth question was never exist actually. I purposely create it to see if any of you are brave enough to take the risk of forever being banned from taking the exam which one of you did. Ibiki gave a sharp nod to Naruto and continued, the first nine questions were to test your ability of gathering information while the final question is to test your braveness and determination. In times, information is more important than life and on missions in the battlefield, people risk their lives to get their hand on. If the enemy or third person notices you, there is no guarantee that the information will be accurate. Important information in your hands can be a powerful weapon for your comrades and for the village. Let me explain the tenth question. The take it, or not take it, decision. Obviously these were painful choices. Those who choose later fail along with their teammates. Those who choose to take it could lose the chance to ever take the test again. A true leap of faith. How about these two choices, say you guys become a chunin. Your mission is to steal a secret document. The amount of ninjas, their abilities and others are unknown to you and of course there could be traps set all around you. Now. Do you accept or not? Because you don't want to die, because your comrades can be hurt. Can you avoid the dangerous mission? The answer is no. No matter what the danger, there are missions you can't avoid. The ability to be courageous and survive any hardship. This is an ability needed to become a Chunin captain. Those who can't put their destinies on the line who cling to the uncertain future of, there's always next year, and then walk away from their chance. Those piece of trash who can only make such cowardly choices don't have the right to become a chunin, that's how I feel. Said Ibiki with a smile that indicating he is proud of them. Congratulation once again and good luck for the second phase of the exam. Immediately, the wall was exploded following by a huge banner that written the Y and single Mitarashi Anko. Then, everyone saw a fairy tall woman with slender frame who has light brown, pupil-less eyes and short spiky, fanned ponytail violet hair entered the room. She wears a fitted mesh bodysuit that covers her from her down to her thighs underneath of a tan overcoat with a purple inseam and a pocket on each side, a dark orange mini skirt, a dark blue belt, and pale gray shin guards. In addition to the typical Konoha's headband, she also wears a small pendant that looks like a snake fang and a wristwatch that were given to her by Orochimaru. You are too early Anko. 
said Ibiki to the woman that known as Anko, causing her to look at Ibiki then the clock then the participants. Hey, it's your fault for causing me too early. You passed so many brats that are not ready yet to be a chunin, replied Anko Bitor she crossed her arms. Ibiki released a sigh and pointed his finger at Naruto, it is all his fault. He managed to make me shock with his killer intent. Oh what the ing hell. Anko looked at Ibiki with a shock face then shifted her gaze to the sleepy Naruto. This brat made Ibiki shock with his killer intent. That is extremely amazing. Whatever. I am pretty sure three quarters of these brats will fail for the second phase. Let's go. Anko led everyone to the unknown destination before Ibiki and his assistants went to collect the participants exam paper. When Ibiki collected Naruto's paper, he was surprised and smiled for two things. One is because Naruto wrote Yukushi Kabuto as the spy. He knows all of the genin's abilities and smells like a corpse as well as having a malicious aura. Two is because he had just passed someone who didn't even answer a single question. Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto A. Not bad kid. Location, Forest of Death. So you were the brats that gonna become a chunin? Ha ha ha. That's a great joke. Whatever kids, welcome to the Forest of Death. For the second phase of the exam, you need to collect these two scrolls and survive for five days. Anko revealed two scrolls to the participants, Heaven and Earth. She was about to explain the scrolls until a random aim nin who stood in front of Naruto screamed. Five days. That's crazy. How are we going to eat? Thanks to him, everyone began to panic even Naruto's teammates, much to his embarrassment which Anko noticed. He's right. Where are we going to sleep? How are we going to survive? How the hell are we going to clean ourselves? Anko had enough and released a powerful shockwave that made everyone gasp for air and trembled in fear. Her anger expression became surprise and smirk when the shockwave that she released, doesn't even affect Naruto. She threw a kanai at him but he caught it only for her to appear behind him with another kanai on his. You have improved kid but you looks like you have no interest with the exams. Said Anko before she noticed something sharp poked her back. She turned around and saw another Naruto that made her surprised since she didn't see the enigmatic blondie performed any hand seals. Too bad that I was born with this personality. Replied Naruto coldly to Anko before he received a hug that made Satsuki, Yukumo, Mito, Natsumi and Hanada jealous and gritted their teeth. Anko. Oh come on kid. You used to hang out at my place with Shisui and Ibiki. We miss you so much, you know? Anko pouted and pressed her chest on his back. Look Anko. I don't have time with what people call this. Ah yes, bonding session. It is completely waste of my time because I already have enough of people that I really trust. So, if you will be kind enough, please proceed to explain about the second phase of the exam said Naruto calmly without any anger tone as he crossed his arms and dispelled his clone. Anko released a sigh as she couldn't believe the once sweet, kind and lovely boy became this cold and emotionless teenager. Damn that Izumi for taking Shisui away from him. She shushed back to her spot and raised the heaven and earth scrolls and said. As I said earlier, you need to collect these scrolls and survive for five days. If you get the heaven, you need to collect the opposite and if you get the earth, you need to collect the opposite. Get it? Good, after having these scrolls, survive for five days before head towards the tower located at the center of the forest. Said Anko as his assistants gave random scrolls and a letter to the participants. And if any of you try to open the scrolls once you get it before reaching to the tower after five days, your team will be disqualified immediately. Sign those papers because Konoha won't be responsible for your death. After signing the letter and gave to the assistant, Naruto received heaven scroll which he gave to Yukumo. Protect this scroll with your own life. I trust you since if anything happens, you can run away by casting Genjutsu on yourself. Said Naruto without any emotion to the genin. He then continued, I will guard you both, Yukumo behind me and prepare to cast Genjutsu to the enemies and Satsuki will scout using Sharingan. Get it? They nodded their head and watched Naruto looked at the sky with a sad face. And Naruto. We've been wondering if you. Yukumo looked at Satsuki and said, if you forgive us for what we did to you. Naruto closed his eyes and looked at Satsuki and Yukumo emotionless, making them to flinch and look down, trying their best not to cry. I am here with both of you to complete the Chunin exams, not to fix our relationship which I believe there's no point to fix it. As I told to Anko earlier, I am here to become a Chunin, 
not to waste my precious time with the bonding session. This time Satsuki replied with anger as she clenched her fist tightly and revealed her Sharingan, why can't you forgive us? Why you are so close with Shikamaru, Shino and Choji but not us? We are your teammates for sake. Naruto, the past is past, you should move on and forgive us for what everyone did to you. Forgive? Past is past. After what they did to him, after what they called him, they think Naruto will easily forgive them? He clenched his fist tightly as he desperately calming himself down before slap them. If you want to know so badly Uchiha and Kurama, I made my choice because it is my right and a right thing to do. I won't forget what everyone did to me years ago and won't bother to forgive those bastards. I already have enough friends or precious people, I don't need to add more because I know they will betray me one day. You want to know the truth, Satsuki, Yukumo. You both are scums and will always be scums because you abandon your comrade and willingly to ditch your comrade to gain something. In my eyes, you both are scums and don't even bother to say sorry to me because I won't forgive you both. So, do me a favor, focus on the exams instead of fixing the thing that can't be fixed anymore. Naruto's words with hateful glares caused Satsuki and Yukumo to cry, accepting the fact that Naruto won't forgive them. They quickly wiped away their tears when Naruto followed the assistant that gave him the scroll and letter to one of the gates. Once Anko screamed begin, the gates to enter the forest of death were opened, immediately every team's rushed inside. Hokage's office, you said that my son told you there is a spy? Yes Hokage-sama, he used Morse code to inform me, and he wrote the spy's name on his test paper, Yukushi Kabuto. Minato widened his eyes and immediately looked at Orochimaru who scowled as he recalled the memory of Kabuto tried to kill him with the help of his own comrade, Hiroko. I knew it. Hiroko must be planning on destroying Konoha. That is why this year Kumo, Iwa, Aim, Kusa and Hoshi sent their best genin squad. On top of that, there's a new village that called Otogakure, said Minato as he slammed his fist to the table and rubbed his temples. Not only that Hokage-sama but I overheard about an Iwa nin that goes by the name of Kuritsuchi told Naruto that she will kill him. Naruto also managed to make me afraid with his own killer intent. Minato looked at Ibiki with a surprised face and smiled. His son managed to make Konoha most sadistic ninja afraid but his smile became frowned when he remembered that it was not him who trained Naruto but Toborama who acted like a father to him. Minato-kun. I believe we should just cancel the exam said Orochimaru to Minato but the young Hokage shook his head. No Orochimaru, I won't cancel the exam. Even though I know that Hiroko are planning to destroy the Konoha or should I say invasion, I still believe that he is going to fail because of few things. Orochimaru arched his eyebrow and said, few things of what? We have three Hokage with the two of them are the strongest cage despite their old age. We have three legendary Sanin who survived from Hanzo the Salamander. We have two Jonin with Sharingan, a Jonin who was once part of the Twelve Guardian Ninja, a Jonin with Genjutsu that no one can defeat, three Uchiha with their powerful Mangyako Sharingan, my wife, our ally Yami and. And who, Minato kun? Minato looked at Orochimaru with a serious face and said, Naruto. Living room. Tobarama's house Tobarama could be seen reading a scroll that was given to him by a friend of him with a frown. He sealed the scroll and released a sigh as he looked at the ceiling. Hiroko, a nuke nin and former friend to the legendary Sanin is planning to destroy Konoha with his allies, Iwa, Kumo, Aim, Hoshi and possibly Suna. He get up and prepared to meet Minato to discuss about the upcoming invasion. As he grabbed the doorknob, suddenly he heard someone called him. Tobarama. Tobarama immediately flinched and turned around before caught a glimpse of the spirit of his elder brother and sister-in-law. They then faded into thin air as he saw a bright light coming out from his room. Quickly, Tobarama went to his room and saw the ring of the Lucy's crystal in the middle of the ring, shining brightly. The elder cage grabbed the ring and wore it. Location. Unknown, it has been a while Senju Tobarama. Said a deep voice to Tobarama who found himself in another dimension with a gigantic statue wearing dragonic armor with four angelic wings and a tail standing before him. Yorichi-sama. My time has come isn't it? Yorichi nodded his head and conjured a vision of a younger Tobarama facing against Kinkaku Force. The Naidem Hokage smiled and recalled about how he survived from Kinkaku Force. Flashback after passing the Hokage mantle to Hiruzen, Tobarama dashed towards the direction of Kinkaku Force and immediately pulled out his Reijin no Ken. 
20 Nuke Nin of Kumo Ha. Damn Kinkaku and Ginkaku, you tried to kill me in a month ago and now you try to kill my students? I'm not gonna let that happen. Thought Tobarama before he threw several kanai at them, causing them to jump away to avoid it. Tobarama shushened to the nearest enemy and decapitated the Kumo Nin. Then, Sweden, Swedana, water style, water severing wave. Tobarama spew out a high pressure stream that went through three Kumo Nin. One of them foolishly tried to kick Tobarama's waist but the Hokage grabbed his ankle and brought down Rage and No Ken, cutting it before he finished the enemy by electrocuting him until the enemy became ashes. Akumo Nin managed to slash Tobarama's thigh, resulting the Hokage cut the Kumo Nin's arms and right leg before bisected his head, quickly jumping to the air to avoid Kinkaku's Bashozen. Hai no Maki, Bashozen. Coil of fire. Tobarama narrowed his eyes and threw two kanai at Kinkaku who avoided it making Tobarama smirked and used Hiraishin to teleport in front of Kinkaku and kicked him in the stomach. Tobarama's instinct screamed at him, telling him to shush in quickly which he did to avoid a swing from Ginkaku's Shichiseiken. He reappeared not too far from them and engaged in a fierce Kenjutsu match with two enemies. He managed to disarm them but Akumo Nin sneaked behind him and stabbed him through his abdomen. Arg. Tobarama summoned two cage Bunshin and reverse headbutted the enemy. One of his clone kicked the enemy's chest before another one finished him by decapitated him with a kanai before the two of them dispelled as he used Irio Ninjutsu to heal his injury. He then sensed four enemies surrounded him in the cardinal directions. Raimu Raito. Limelight. Tobarama watched they joined their Raiden Chakra in the form of four connecting streams that shoot high into the sky above the target area. Then, it created a massive ball of lightning that struck Tobarama causing a powerful explosion with the area incinerated by it. When the dust gone, it was revealed that Tobarama managed to dodge the attack but his left arm was unfortunate, covered in third-degree burn mark and smoky husk. His battle armor also gone with his bodysuit torn in several areas. Tobarama looked at the arm and winced in pain before he quickly Hiraishin behind the grinning Ginkaku and beheaded him, causing Kinkaku who saw it to angry and transformed into version 2 of Kyubi, shocking Tobarama. This is Kyubi's chakra, so it was true that the Kyubi swallowed Kinkaku and Ginkaku because they tried to capture him for Kumo. Damn it, if only I accept Mitone's offer about Fuinjutsu technique. Tobarama watched Kinkaku berserkly charged at the Hokage and slammed down his tails but missed. The injured Hokage performed Sweden. Swiriudan no Jutsu, water style, water dragon bullet Jutsu, at Kinkaku but the pseudo Jinchuriki avoided it and disappeared from his sight. Tobarama turned around and received a powerful punch to his face by Kinkaku, causing his jawbone to crack. Before he could recover the rest of the Kumo Nin charged at Tobarama and performed another Raimu Raito, Limelight, fatally injuring Tobarama who unable to dodge it. The dying Tobarama saw Kinkaku rushed at him and quickly used the rest of his chakra to avoid Kinkaku's tails by Hiraishin to one of the enemies and stabbed him in his throat. But Tobarama received a powerful kick to his knee chest and left arm from the rest of the enemies except Kinkaku. Kinkaku then grabbed Tobarama with his large hand and destroyed all his bones by squeezing Tobarama before repeatedly slamming him down and used one of the tail to stab Tobarama. He then lifted the dying cage and threw him away before berserkly attacked his own comrades. The dying Tobarama looked at the sky and smiled sadly as his time has come but then, he heard a voice that he never thought he will heard again, his elder brother's voice. Tobarama. Have you forget my last wish to you? Then, another voice that made him stiffen. Protect Luna and my family for me, my old friend. Tobarama took out the ring of the Lucy from his pocket and wore it, causing his body to surround by bluish purple flame that healed all his wounds immediately. He get up and looked at his hands as he heard Hashirama's voice encouraged him. You can do it brother because I trust in you. Don't know what kind of trick you're using but you're not gonna alive to see the next day said Kinkaku as he charged at Tobarama but the latter disappeared in sparks of blue, violet and white. What the? Tobarama turned around slowly and extended his left arm, releasing a burst of blue lightning at Kinkaku that caused the Kumo Nin to fly away. He then took out two kanai from his pouch and covered it with ice and threw it at Kinkaku who dodged it. The Hokage then reappeared at one of the kanai and cut three of seven Kinkaku's tail with one of the kanai. In anger, Kinkaku tried to kill Tobarama by slamming his enlarged hand but Tobarama used Protect and launched a powerful Thundaga at Kinkaku. 
Tobarama then jumped and struck Kinkaku's face with his knee before delivered a roundhouse kick to the Kumo Nins but Kinkaku grabbed his ankle and tried to crush but failed due to Tobarama disappeared and reappeared behind and punched Kinkaku's back. He shushin in front of Kinkaku and latched his hand onto the Kumo Nin before ripped out his head with the spine. Tobarama. Tobarama turned around and found himself in a dimension with someone that he didn't recognize. You used the ring and the price is your blood but you are attached to the wishes that made by your brother and Noctis, said the person to Tobarama. How did you, it doesn't matter how did I knew whether from who I know about it. All that matters is your life, said the mysterious person with strange flame mark on his face. Can I live a bit longer to meet the chosen king? asked Tobarama to the person who replied by showing two orbs. The right orb is made from a pure and warm chakra with blue particles swirling around it. The left orb is made from a sinister and dark chakra with red particles raining upward. I can delay your death since my descendant wished you to save his family but you gotta choose which decision that will decide how long will you live, said the mysterious person to Tobarama. You choose the right orb, you will live to meet the chosen child who will born without love of his family and people and you will die peacefully, protecting him. He will save the world from the destruction at the cost of his life. What about the left orb? The left orb will lead you to another chosen child who will destroy the world like the greatest calamity and born with hatred and anger but she can be changed into a better person. You will find a woman that you will love and will have a happy family if you accept the left orb but you will die painfully and live for a short period of time. How long, the mysterious man interrupted Tobarama by telling him, I can't tell you but it depends on your decision to meet which chosen child that might change the world. One of them could be the final king or the chaos queen. Very well then, I will choose the right orb. The person smiled and said, the contract has forged. Your death will be delayed until the day where the chosen child revealed the sign of him accepting his status as one of the chosen children. Farewell mortal and may we meet again on the other side. Flashback end. The time has almost come for you to pay what you must pay decades ago. Said Yorichi to Tobarama who looked at him with a sad smile. I know but I fear that if I die, he will become the very thing that he swore to defeat replied Tobarama to Yorichi. Yes, I fear the same thing too because I have stopped seeing into the future but with your death, it will strive him into someone who will be a powerful warrior like you, said Yorichi as his body surrounded in blue aura before he revealed his human form. Will he find the person that loves him sincerely one day? Tobarama's question made Yorichi smiled and remembered his wife immediately. The founder king have Tobarama a smile and said, he will find someone who loves him sincerely because of their similar childhood. Fear not, Tobarama. Time skip. Three days later Team 12 could be seen jumping from one branch to another branch, searching for another team to steal their scroll. They have met two teams from AIM and a team from Kusa and defeated them, gaining two heaven scrolls and an earth scroll in the process. Thanks to Naruto's suggestion, they decided to eliminate several teams by taking as much as scroll that they could. Two days left and they could finish the second phase of the exam and proceed to the next phase. Their thoughts were broken when Naruto signaled them enemy up ahead. Wait, an enemy? Yukumo, Satsuki, scatter now, ordered Naruto before he and his teammates disappeared via Shushin to avoid a powerful giant blazing orb that will burn them to ashes if they hit by it. They then reappeared not too far from their previous spot and heard a dry chuckle from a female. You are really good Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto or should I call? Naruto loses Kylum. Naruto quickly summoned Blade of the Mystic and watched a female slowly walk towards him with a smirk like a predator to its prey. At first he unable to recognize who is the woman until she revealed her Sharingan to him, causing Naruto to recall the memory of Shisui died in his arms. Uchiha Izumi. Said Naruto before he appeared in front of Izumi and brought down the blade but Izumi blocked it with a Masamune that has dark handle with crimson 12 feet long blade that have yellow eyes and glowing orange cracks on it, the Masatsu. Why are you here, you bastard? To destroy Konoha and kill the final king. Said Izumi as she kicked Naruto away and performed Katen. Gokaku no Jutsu, fire style, great fireball Jutsu. At Naruto who replied by defending him and his teammates via Sweden. Tsujihenki, water style, water wall. Satsuki, Yukumo, run. Both Satsuki and Yukumo looked at Naruto with a shocking face, unable to believe what they heard from him. That is an order. But, Satsuki was interrupted by Naruto who gave her a stern glare. No but. Run as far as you can, she doesn't interest with any of you. She is here to kill me. 
So run as far as you can with the scrolls and team up with Shikamaru or Shino's team. Naruto, are you insane? We know that you are really strong but are you strong enough to take her alone? Don't be so stupid, yelled Yukumo angrily to Naruto who only silent. Yukumo's right. We are comrades and sensei always tell us that those who abandon their comrades are scum. Barked Satsuki as her Sharingan blazing, causing Izumi to smirk and add her. If both of you really want to befriend with me, I will give you the chance but leave this place. Said Naruto calmly to the girls, stunning them completely as they looked at Naruto. But if both of you are so stubborn that you refuse to obey my command, then I will treat you like a stranger after the Chunin exams is finished. The two girls looked at each other and nodded their heads sadly before disappeared via Shushin, leaving only Naruto and Izumi. Sacrificing yourself for the sake of those useless weak girls, Izumi ed the blade of her Masatsu and disappeared before reappeared behind Naruto, swinging her blade at Naruto's but the genin blocked it with his blade. Not bad. Naruto jumped away from Izumi to create a distance and threw the blade of the mystic at Izumi who avoided it by jumping to the air only for Naruto to appear at the blade's position and summoned Bow of the Clever. He then shot the arrow at Izumi who deflected it and fired a burst of lightning from the tip of the blade, making Naruto summon Shield of the Just to block it and disappeared via Shushin. He reappeared not too far from Izumi and performed Katen. Gokaku no Jutsu, Fire Style, Great Fireball Jutsu, which Izumi did the same thing, their technique getting larger and larger until it was exploded, creating thick dark smoke that blinding their visions. Not bad Naruto, you match me step for step, said Izumi to Naruto before she disappeared and reappeared behind Naruto. Her speed was so fast that Naruto immediately activated his Sharingan and ducked quickly before performed a low sweep kick that Izumi avoided by jumping. He's really good, fast and strong. Perhaps he will accept my offer during the invasion. Deactivating Sharingan so that Izumi won't know about it, Naruto delivered a fast kick to Izumi's face, hitting her and stunning her for few seconds before Naruto engulfed his arms in flames and delivered a powerful punch to Izumi's stomach, sending her flying away. But turns out it was a clone as the real Izumi appeared behind Naruto and kicked him in the chest. Before he could get up, Izumi sat down on Naruto's stomach and repeatedly punched him in the face until Naruto headbutted her and punched her in the face. Naruto shushin away from Izumi and reappeared not too far from her with angry smirked and ran towards him before jumped to the air and attempted to strike him in the face with her knee but Naruto sidestepped and punched her. Izumi quickly recovered from the punch and grabbed Naruto's right fist before hit him in the stomach and face with her knee. She then slammed both of her fists to the back of Naruto's head. Then. Izumi summoned a spear from thin air and rammed it to Naruto's chest before kicked him away. Naruto quickly recovered from the attack which surprised Izumi who expected him not to fight her due to his injuries. He then delivered a roundhouse kick that Izumi avoided in a fast jab that she blocked before stabbed Izumi's right waist with a kanai, then her stomach before punched her in the face. Izumi then punched Naruto in the face twice and prepared to kick him but Naruto summoned Katana of the Wise and slashed Izumi twice before rammed two kanai into her chest, forcing the granddaughter of Uchiha Madara to jump away and pulled out the kanai. She hissed in pain and watched her injuries healed itself in few seconds, making Naruto clenched his fist tightly and shot fireballs at Izumi who deflected it easily and reappeared behind Naruto. Summoning Hakai, Naruto raised his sword to block Izumi's Masatsu. Yokotatsu. Sunflower thrust. Naruto delivered a single thrust attack with the point of the blade at Izumi, aiming her forehead but she blocked it. Gekko Katawerzuki. Moonbow, half, broken moon. Izumi's Masamune surrounded with sinister chakra as she swung it in a downward slash, resulting in a powerful six-fold slash crashing down on Naruto who quickly shushin. Naruto then reappeared and saw several miniature craters before growled in pain as he looked at his left arm that have countless of deep and long cuts. That. That attack just now is Breath of the Moon style isn't it? Asked Naruto to Izumi who nodded her head as she tightened her grip onto the handle of her sword. Shit, my left arm is numb which means her technique is poisonous. On two of that, her Breath of the Moon style is a bit different than Yorichi-san's brother. Tokoyo Kagetsu, Mukan. Perpetual Night. Lonely Moon, incessant. Naruto immediately summoned Shield of the Just as Izumi released a wild storm of slashes in multiple directions. The attack was so powerful that it broke the shield and badly injured Naruto as well as devastated the entire area. Naruto coughed up blood and slowly got up as he gathered his chakra, 
causing his body to surround with blue aura. Naruto then disappeared from Azumi's sight and reappeared behind her with a kanai. He stabbed Azumi's back and berserkly pulled it down, but the Azumi that he stabbed is a Raiden Bunshin that electrocuted him. The real Izumi appeared in front of Naruto and kicked him to the air before grabbed his ankle and slammed him to the ground. She summoned a flaming cobra that lifted Naruto to the air before slammed down Naruto again. Badly injured but refused to give up, Naruto slowly get up and used the rest of his chakra to create a flaming dragon-shaped projectile at Izumi who deflected it and Shushin in front of Naruto. The blonde genin delivered a er punch to Izumi but the Uchiha caught his fist and broke by crushing it. Izumi then kicked Naruto's knee so hard that it broke and punched Naruto several times while choking him tightly. She then delivered a powerful stomp to Naruto's chest and pressed her foot deeper until his ribs were broken before grabbed his head and slammed his face to her knee many times. Izumi then proceeded to beat Naruto brutally but every time she beat him, Naruto will get up and try to attack him only for her to punch her to the ground and continued beating him again and again until he was turned into a bloody pulp. I could kill you right now if I want but I have decided that it is better for you to live a bit longer to seek the power that could kill me," said Izumi to Naruto as she knelt down and lifted Naruto slightly via his hair. But before I leave you here, I will give you a gift that you will remember it vividly. Izumi let go off Naruto's hair and sat on his thighs before Ed his and bit it, resulting Naruto to scream in agony as pulsating black veins appeared across his face with his hair became white and eyes became golden for several seconds. Izumi then looked at Naruto's and smirked when she saw three Tomo mark on it. Good night Naruto-kun. Meanwhile Satsuki and Yakumo were jumping from one branch to another, searching for Shikamaru's team or Shino's team at the request of Naruto. As they were continued searching for them, suddenly the Oto Nin appeared before them. It's the Odo team, don't worry Yakumo, they're not really powerful, said Satsuki as she activated her Sharingan and performed Kaden Gokaku no Jutsu, fire style great fireball jutsu, at them but they avoided it and charged towards Satsuki and Yakumo. The two of them then performed Kaden, Karyu Enden, fire style flame dragon bullet jutsu, at the mummy guy who managed to kawari me at the last minute as the spiky hair Odo Nin appeared behind them and extended his arms forward. Zankukyokuha. Extreme decapitating airwaves, Satsuki and Yakumo received the attack that caused them to fly away but managed to recover from the jutsu as Yakumo performed Megan. Narakumi no jutsu, demonic illusion. Hell viewing jutsu, at the mummy guy that rushed towards her giving a chance for Satsuki to plant a kick to his chin that sent him to the air. Dosu! Screamed the female Auto Nin to her teammates before she threw several Senbon at Satsuki who burnt it with Kaden, Enden, fire-style flame bullet. Kin! Tried to distract them with Genjutsu, said the spiky hair guy to Kin who growled in anger. Thanks for spilling out my next tactic Zaku, replied Kin in anger before she noticed that the entire forest changed to volcanic island. Kai! The genjutsu didn't dispel and Kin turned around when she sensed someone standing right behind her. She gasped and received a powerful punch to her face that knocked her out. Kin! Screamed Dosu who rushed towards Yakumo and tried to punch her but found himself unable to move. I, I can't move. Zaku, help me. Dosu! Damn you! Zaku ran towards Yakumo but Hanada suddenly appeared in front of him and delivered two consecutive strike to Zaku stunning him before Kiba appeared and knocked him out. Hanada. Kiba. Asked Satsuki to the two members of Team 8 who gave the Uchiha a smile to ensure her that she is safe. As for Dosu, he was knocked out by Choji who enlarged his fist and punched him after the former had insulted him by calling Choji a fat ugly bitch. Choji, Ino? You both came here to save me? Asked Yakumo happily to them who nodded their head. Where's Naruto? Yakumo and Satsuki watched Shikamaru and Shino walk towards them. Yakumo, Satsuki, where is him? We saw a huge explosion earlier. Asked again Shikamaru to the girls. He fought Uchiha Izumi so that we can escape. Replied Satsuki to Shikamaru who immediately widened his eyes like Shino while everyone were confused. Uchiha Izumi, the granddaughter of Uchiha Madara and the person who slaughtered majority of Uchiha clansmen. We need to find him now and report to Hokage. Let's go!" said Shino calmly to everyone who agreed with what he said. Naruto's location Kabuto had been ordered by Hiroko to kill Naruto and bring back his corpse to him which he agreed although felt a bit weird since Izumi told Hiroko that she sparred him because she wants him in the future. 
Nevertheless, he proceeded to Naruto's location with a kunai coated with deadly poison. When he arrived at the scene, he saw unconscious, badly beaten and half Naruto. Analyzing his condition, Kabuto was surprised that Naruto is still alive despite his left lung is collapsed with several of his ribs punctured his lung and damaged internal organs. Let's just get this over with, said Kabuto as he rammed the kunai to Naruto's forehead but Naruto caught it at the last second and kicked Kabuto away. He get up slowly as he producing sinister, jagged and flame-like dark aura that made the nearby trees to decay rapidly. Something's definitely wrong with him. He's producing a very dark chakra, in fact more darker than Hiroko-sama. Kabuto's hands surrounded with blue chakra as he rushed towards Naruto and tried to strike his but Naruto ducked to avoid it and uppercuts him to the air before grabbed his ankle and slammed him to the ground. Naruto then berserkly stomping Kabuto's face and chest before lifted him to the air and slammed his back to his knee, shattering Kabuto's spine and caused him to paralyze. When Kabuto tried to scream in pain after his spine being shattered, Naruto slammed his face to the nearby dead tree. He then pinned Kabuto with a kanai and disappeared in a burst of flames before reappeared several feet away from Kabuto and summoned a pillar behind him. Get over here. Naruto launched a flaming metal chain with a tipped kanai at the end into Kabuto's head and pulled out his head. Then, Naruto threw it against the pillar and impaled it with a kanai. Naruto smirked and touched the seal that was given to him by Izumi earlier. He then shushin away just in time as a squad of Anbu led by Itachi arrived at the scene. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.